All right, my friends, and now we return with an Autogen tourney. I am so damn excited. I don't know why we haven't done this sooner, but nonetheless, guys, today it is going to be a four-man auto-generated tournament. And uh, <laughs> so both the players have already picked their armies. Oh my god, Xyphos army. <laughs> oh man, all right, so we can actually show the armies before the game starts. It's not too much of a big deal because, again, they can't change their armies because I am looking at their first autogen and making sure the armies are the exact same. So in our first round of the day, it is going to be Xyphos against Tank in a best of three showdown. Hyale Anale versus Falcon in our second best of three. And our grand finals, which of course are going to be best of five. We'll see who's going to be there. Not quite sure. Yes. Welcome. We're back to streaming. Life is good once again. So I need to update the scorecards. Totally blanked on that. Left them from yesterday. So let me go ahead and get that fixed. And uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at the uh, armies here. Yeah, I, knew, I always forget to do at least one thing here. And this is going to be tank on this side. And the score is currently 0-0. Zero, zero. It is not 3-1. But it's perfect. It gives more time for people to join so people don't miss the first game. Oh my god, you guys are uh, in for a true treat. This first, this first game here is uh, quite a circus. All right, that looks good to me. So, uh, just before the game starts, we'll go over the army. So if you look at Tank's army, this is his autogen. So, he got a Von Kar Karstein Vampire Lord. I mean, it could be worse. Um, I don't know what mount he got because it is auto-generated, but it looks like he's probably on a Hellsteed or something. I don't know. I don't think that's a dragon. Because uh, a caster with a dragon would probably be like closer to 3,000 gold. So, I think he's on like a Hellsteed or maybe a horse. He did also get a Banshee, a couple zombies, Crypt Ghouls. You know, thankfully for him, he did also get Graveguard with Great Weapons, which is quite nice. You got Black Knights, Hex Wraiths, Bats, Crypt Horrors. It, it really looks like an autogen army. Just random chevrons everywhere, like one of each unit. Truly a glorious build. And now for Xyphos. Xyphos did get the White Dwarf. He got Grombi. He did also get a Thane. Hammers, you know, honestly, not a bad front line with some Slayer support. Dragonback Slayers, Giant Slayers, a Cannon, a Gyro Bomber, and four Iron Drakes. Oh my god. This is too much to bear, guys. It's too much. All right, game one in our first best of three between Tank and Xyphos. In this madness autogen tourney. Welcome, my friends. I hope you're all doing well. Let us go ahead and jump in and have some goddamn fun. So I'm going to fire up my phone here so I can see the chat a little bit better. I uh, ordered a second monitor, but the cable it came with was actually faulty. So unfortunately, I'm still stuck on my cursed phone for reading chat. I had to order a different one. Good times indeed for all. The rumble in the old world is here. I am really, really excited. All right, perfect. It's pulling up here. We are loading onto our first map. Uh, the players are doing a standard pick and ban system as well. And perfect. All right. Are we seeing this? That doesn't look like it yet. All right, it should show up soon anyways. <clears throat> but for now, I'll minimize and take a look at what you guys are uh, up to. We got a donation coming in from Ivar. Thank you for the 50 NOK glorious tourney. It shall be, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, we got some serious builds for sure. Uh, Bob Ross, my campaign, I actually finished it. But yeah, so it'll be, you guys will see. So I used to do autogens way, way back in the day. It was one of the first things I did on the channel, um, but it's been a long time. It's been a long time since I've done these, so I'm very excited to be back. So game one, it's going to be Tank against Xyphos. Xyphos playing a, a very uncharacteristic pick for himself. It is going to be the Dawi facing off against Tank's Vampire Count. So Tank picking his main faction. It is best of three, though. And, uh, you know, Dwarves actually have a pretty good autogen because, you know, you you don't have to worry about, like, the caster or not getting a caster. For the most part, you're still going to get some decent infantry and probably some missile pieces. So I do actually like the pick of the Dwarves here in the autogen. <laughs> Tank says I have almost no infantry. Oh, my God. Yeah, so for Tank's army, he's got Dire Wolves. He's got Hex Raids. Pretty terrible against Dwarves. Black Knights. Uh, he does have some Graveguard with Great Weapons, some Crypt Horrors. So at least he does have some decent AP with a little bit of Corpse Cart support. Like, it's not the worst army in the world against Dawi. It's also got a Banshee. Banshees are sometimes a weird niche pick against Dwarves, but against Grom Brindle, they're pretty terrible because he does do magic damage. We got a Goose up in the sky, which is going to be a really nice counter against the uh, Gyro Bomber of Xyphos. And that appears to be it. Von Karstein, Vampire Lord, players are forced to keep all their spells, and uh, I'm sure they're loving that. And now for the forces of Xyphos, a classic uh, Dwarf setup back here. I mean, it almost looks like a decent Dwarf setup. He's got like some hammers here. He's got some Dwarf Warriors. He's got four of the Iron Drakes with the Flamethrowers, a couple Slayers in the back to defend, and honestly, a cannon, like, I actually think Xyphos' build is probably, I don't know, though. I don't know. Four Iron Drakes is a lot to protect. Like, I want to love this build, but there's a Gyro Bomber. 
Uh, it's just, there's so many things about the build that are just mega janky. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens here. Thank you all so much for joining today. It's truly a pleasure. And perfect. Yeah, so if you guys go into a custom battle, uh, for example, with your friends or just by yourself, there is a button you can click to auto-generate an army. So basically, just all randoms an army for you instantly. So I don't really know what the original purpose of that was. Perhaps just to give newer players like a quick, a quick way to build an army, but it makes for really fun, ridiculous games. So, you know, more or less all players today are on an even playing field. <laughs> Everyone is stuck in the autogen. It's funny because before the game started, both Tank and Xyphos were like, oh my god, I lose, this is over. It just goes to show, you know, everybody is using uh, janky armies. And yes, I can see chat now. We are good. Yeah, the vamps, the vamps can get some rough stuff for sure because sometimes what can happen with vampire counts in autogen is you can get a vampire lord and then also a vampire caster, and that's a lot of money being spent on two characters, which uh, we're not allowing them to change magic. They're having to go in full haggard mode. Whatever the gods give them, they're they're stuck with. Hey, Senior, I'm doing really well. I'm doing very, very well indeed. So here we have Xyphos. This is something I never thought I would say on a Total War stream. We have Xyphos coming out with the Gyro Bomber. And he is going to be charging the Von Karstein Vampire Lord. It looks like trying to get some freebies, but there are Felbats and a Goose. But oh, look at that. And the cannon's coming in. Of course, people don't know this, but the Gyro Bomber does actually have a little bit of a minigun on top of it. And it's actually doing some decent damage. But the Von Karstein Vampire Lord, oh my god, he has Storm of the Night! I totally forgot about that. But Storm of the Night is going to lock down the Gyro Bomber and allow the Goose to catch it. Granted, it still might be able to get away, but that's still some pretty solid damage right there on the uh, Gyro Bomber from the Goose. So far, an even trade, more or less. Now Xyphos has switched his cannons onto the Goose up in the sky, it looks like. Now he's actually going after the Cryptors, which I think is smart. He has plenty of Slayers. Like, he has Giant Slayers. He has uh, some regular... I think he even got Dragonback Slayers, which is pretty insane. So he has plenty of tools to deal with the Goose, for sure. Okay, players just saying ready, just making sure they don't have any questions. And now the Iron Drakes are, the Iron Drakes are roasting the uh, Terror Goose here. Look at this. Oh my god, this is so haggard. And the Iron Drakes are also shooting up in the sky after the uh, Felbats. This is like a meme army, right? Like, four Iron Drakes. But they're actually fending off the Goose! Oh my god! And it looks like there's going to be a summon coming down from the Von Karstein Lord somewhere. He was thinking about it. Oh my god, those fel those Felbats just got destroyed! Absolutely destroyed. The Iron Drakes showed no mercy. I'm sure Tank is like, oh god, this is going to suck so bad. Now, Tank has left something in the back. It looks like he left his uh, his Banshee back there, so he definitely wants to pull that in. But The Dwarves took a little bit of damage from the Goose. Iron Drakes lost one model, and the Gyro Bomber took a little bit as well. And now Tank's going to be going in pretty balls deep with the Hex Brace. They are uh, pretty durable against non-magic damage. Here they come, charging into the very, very uh, tanky Iron Drakes here. And Grom Riddle coming in, trying to get a Flash Bomb. He does get a Flash Bomb. He slows them down to 22 speed, but... I don't know if the Dragonback Slayers can actually catch them and add their slow on top of this. Might be able to keep them in check, but it looks like for the most part they're safe. Zombie Summon to the back from the Von Karstein Vampire Lord. Right on top of the cannon is quite nice. And also you can see he's kind of diving back here, trying to get on some of the Iron Drakes. But he's got to be careful. There's a lot of Angry Dwarves. A nice Storm of the Night coming in from Tank there. Able to lock down that Gyro Bomber once again. Down to 1500 HP, give or take. And the Hex Rays have pulled back. But the zombies summon very clutch because now what's happening is I think that the Dwarven Iron Drakes are shooting the zombies, but they're also friendly firing their own cannon. Yeah, they are for sure. Oh no, a misplay from Xyphos. He could have just let the crew fight and they probably would have been fine. But nonetheless, Cryptors are coming in, being roasted by the Iron Drakes on the approach. Lightly armored, taking a ton of damage. And Giant Slayers are going to make very quick work of them if they stay in combat. So Tank having to be very tactical, but that was a good play. Realizing that Xyphos might actually want to defend his cannon using <clears throat> using the uh, the Iron Drakes. Man, that was clutch. But now the Iron Drakes are roasting the Vampire Count forces as they approach. Look at this. Graveguard down to 89 models. Zombies down to a uh, fair... Well, they still have a lot of models, but they've taken a lot of damage. And the Dwarven Hammers are falling back. Xyphos with the Quad Iron Drake. Coming in hot here against the Graveguard with great weapons. Man, that is actually pretty devastating. In the back, though, this could be Tank's moment to shine. Black Knights with Lances coming in, getting a fully couched charge against the Iron Drakes. Doing some really good damage, actually. But the Giant Slayers are nearby. No, those are actually just Dwarf Warriors with great weapons. And the Von Karstein Vampire Lord using Zombie Summons to try and target the other Iron Drakes. And now it looks like Tank is coming in pretty hot here with the Crypt Horrors. And on the far side of the map, the Terror Geist has pretty much dispatched of the Gyro Bomber. It's pretty much going to probably be a non-factor from here on out. But these Iron Drakes are taken down. Tank even getting a little bit grindy here with the Corpse Cart, sending that bad boy in. And the Terror Gooses is, uh, yeah, still in the Gyro Bomber. Looks like he should be able to get it. It does have poison, so it can slow it down and potentially catch it. 
An absolute ridiculous battle right now. You can see the Von Karstein Vampire Lord is attacked by the Thane. It does opt to take that combat, but he's going to want to pull back ASAP. And you can see here the uh, Thane doing a very good job. And man, Thanes are like giant. That guy's huge. Dragonback Slayer is hot on the tail here of the uh, Black Knights. If Tank does lapse in his micro, they could be taken out. Because again, Dragonback Slayers do actually have a slow. And now you can see the speed is 46 on the Black Knights. Probably going to actually end up losing these guys. So currently, the Bounce Pirate is certainly a dwarf favorite. You can see the Iron Drakes with the Flamethrowers. Doing brutal work against the front line of the vampires. I mean, if Iron Drakes do have a bit of a strange niche, it might be against vampire counts. I mean, there's a lot of lightly armored stuff for them to roast and things that are weak to fire damage. So the Iron Drakes man just doing some seriously brutal damage right now. Flash bomb going down by Grombie, slowing down this whole pocket here. And the vampire counts seem to be crumbling pretty quick. If we look around and take inventory of what they have left, we have Crypt Horrors, we have some zombies, we have a Banshee up on the high ground, we have a corpse cart, and I mean, not much else. I don't know though, Tank could still pull this one back. I mean, if he could cycle charge really effectively <clears throat> with the Hex Race and get on top of the Iron Drakes and the other troops like that and avoid the Slayers and then use the Goose in the late game to snipe the characters, maybe. But nonetheless, the Flamethrowers are shooting in from the Iron Drakes and they do have a Discourage effect and the leadership on these uh, ghostly units is actually quite poor generally. So he is being able to get some uh, decent value there. But yeah, Gyro with the uh, Xyphos with the Gyro Kite and the Storm of the Night coming in once again. Locking down the Gyro Bomber, and now the Bounce of Power is creeping back towards the middle. Tank still has these very powerful single entities. He has the Goose, and even though the Goose is an anti-large character, it still has, you know, pretty good AP values and poison, so it could potentially finish off something like a Thane. A lot of Slayers still left on the battlefield, which is an issue for sure. Oh, and here comes the Goose Breath Attack right down the pipe, and down goes the Gyro Bomber. <clears throat> Beautiful one right there. That was really nice. So the Gyro Bomber is down for the count, and Tank is uh, scrapping his way back into this game. Sorry about that, guys. And uh, yeah, the Banshee is just trying to get down the Iron Drakes. And yeah, getting down the Iron Drakes is pretty clutch, for sure. If Tank is able to really dismantle the uh, Iron Drake play, it's going to free up the cycle charging. A lot of really nasty stuff. But I don't know. I think at the end of the day, though, it's going to be really tough to take down the Giant Slayers here, who, of course, are very good against all the monsters. And the Dragonback Slayers are still in uh, really good shape. Really good shape, for sure. Iron Drakes here, up to 100 kills on those ones. The other Iron Drakes here, up to 71. And now you can see the Goose is coming down here, and the Goose is, uh, appears to be attacking some of the Giant Slayers. Not really sure about that. Iron Drake's still shooting in, and man, doing a bunch of damage. I mean, yeah, that's actually a lot, even against Hex Wraiths. Tank really needs to get them off the battlefield. Like, these Iron Drakes are just punishing him. Something, again, I, I don't say terribly often. So, Invocation on the Heck from the Von Karstein Vampire Lord going down to the Hex Race. Banshee coming in as well. And Tank, man, just showing his proficiency with the Vampire Counts, given an absolutely terrible army. He's still scrapping his way. Granted, both players do have terrible armies. Neither of these armies are what I would call good. So the Von Karstein Vampire Lord back here. Really good focus fire from Tank. <clears throat> Trying to take out the Iron Drakes. 15 of 21 models, and uh, the other Iron Drakes have 10. And over here, we do have a stable pocket of Iron Drakes as well. Thank you, sweetheart. And it looks like they do have 20. Block of Doom going down. Look at that. that. You know, that's something else you would never see, because the Von Karstein Vampire Lord does have Flock of Doom, actually. Which, you know, isn't terrible here, but... Oh, no! The Goose is going down! How did this happen? Oh, he must have gotten caught in the power of the Dragonback. Oh, and the Flamethrower coming on the Goose here! He's down to 300, 200 HP, and it looks like the Terror Goose is down for the count. Ah, oh, man, that didn't need to happen. Yep, Grombrindle must have gotten him in a Smoke Bomb or something, but, man, that Goose went down so damn quick. Still, though, Tank is still, uh, apparently, in this battle... Got the Banshee in the back. The Hex Race are crumbling. They only have uh, 14 models left, it looks like. And here comes the Von Karstein Vampire Lord and the Banshee, trying their best to push off the Iron Drakes. These things are just so damn durable. Yeah, there's so many Giant Slayers left. There's still 40 of those things. I don't know what the Vampires have left that can fight here. They do have the Feasters in the Dusk. They have some uh, the Tithe on the far side, the Zombie ROR's. But here the Iron Drakes are just making very quick work of them, you can see. Shooting downtown. And uh, yeah, a lot of kills. 144 in these Iron Drakes. And that's going to be game. Tank knows it's over at that point. Man, what a scrap. Well played to those players. You know, I actually thought Tank might be able to pull that game back. But I think when the Goose went down, that was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. That Goose got cooked. The <laughs> Goose got cooked. Yeah, look at the kills in the Iron Drakes too. 144, 75. Two of them did kind of get compromised. But um, I think Tank could have won that game. I think he could have won it. If the Goose had maybe lived and he had been really aggressive with it. But... I don't know. It, it was still, I think, favored for Xyphos based on the armies I saw, but still winnable for both players. So it's going to be game one going to ODM Xyphos. So let's go ahead here and update the scorecard. Thank you all so much for joining. It's an absolute pleasure. And let's go ahead and get these next armies set. 
<laughs> Tank says GG for Iron Drakes. Oh my god. That's freaking hilarious. Alright, so now Xyphos does his picks and bans. And I'm just going to be looking at his army. So when he autogens, I can see what he gets just to make sure they don't change. I trust these guys, but you never know. We gotta, we gotta make sure it's fair and honest for everyone here. Alrighty. Oh, yes, gotta give him the map, that's right. Uh, Sword of Torgold. That will be our next map here in this glorious autogen tournament. Thank you guys so much for joining. You did miss the first match, it was quite good. We are on the Sword of Torgold. Zypho says, yikes. I wonder why. It's a good map. Maybe he doesn't like it for what he was planning on picking. Who knows? And then we have a donation coming in. I did miss it during the uh, the battle from Matt Eagle. He says, enjoying your streams. Keep up the good work. Matt, thank you for the donation of the 10 bucks. Glad to hear you're enjoying the streams, man. And there are a lot more to come, I can assure you. We are not messing around anymore. This is a uh, business time. <clears throat> All right. So he's picking high elves and he's banning stuff. He's not sure. I mean, honestly, it doesn't really matter though. So we're going to wait. Xyphos can autogen here. Go ahead and autogen Xyphos. So he's banning dwarves. Uh, Tank can't play dwarves again. I'm just letting him know because he can ban someone else. So he banned Lizardmen. We'll see. Yeah, Lizardmen actually have a good autogen. Oh, oh. Sorry, I had it backwards. <laughs> For some reason, I thought Xyphos was dwarves. I got confused. Wait. Yeah, Xyphos is dwarves. Okay. You can Dowie. All right, so you can see Xyphos. There, here's this autogen army, and now we're going to look at Tank while he autogens. All right, all right. Oh my God, poor Tank. Oh no. Well, you know he got some decent tools actually. Oh my God. So, Xyphos has a princess, no caster, spearmen, two sword masters of Hoeth. He's got a couple archers. He's got some skirmish cav. Oh man, look at this. Xyphos got the double flame spire phoenix off the autogen. Yeah, I got it backwards, guys. My bad. Um, but double Flame Spire Phoenix off the autogen. Now, Tank got a Chaos Lord, an Exalted Hero, three Aspiring Champions. He he got a Giant and a Shagath, at least, which is good, and the Demon Spew. <laughs> Zypho says, my autogen is not bad. And then Tank says, could not say the same here. Oh, man, yeah. Zypho says is better, for sure. He's got, like, good AP Infantry. He's got, like, two Flame Spire Phoenixes. He's got a Bolt Thrower. The only thing that's really bad for Xyphos is that his uh, his lord is pretty weak. You know, honestly, though, I don't know what the mount situation is for this Chaos Lord, but he does have a Shagath and a Giant, both of which are going to be super strong against these uh, infantry. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. The, the thing that I feel really bad for Tank, though, is the triple Exalted Hero. That's, like, so bad. Or Aspiring Champion, sorry. He's got Mirror Guard. He's got some Halberds. <clears throat> The Giant's going to have to carry pretty hard. No casters on either side, though, so that's good. So it is fair in that respect. All right, guys, let us load in. Yeah, poor Tank. But that's the nature of the autogen. I think it's I think it's winnable for Tank, because the Giant is, is going to be really solid. Um, the Giant's really good. I don't know what mount the Chaos Lord has. It looks like a Manticore, which is kind of sucks for him, because he can get caught by the two Phoenixes and just gooned. So, man, Tank's going to have to like put the pressure on Zypho super quick. Like, what I would do, if Xyphos has two Phoenixes and you have no anti-air and you have an Aerial Lord, I would probably grab that Exalted Hero, or not the Exalted Hero, the uh, the Lord with the Manticore and just run to the corner of the map. At the very least, like, you're going to pull the Phoenixes away from the main fighting. Should be a Dragon Lord? Yeah. Based on the cost? Yeah, because he doesn't have any spells, so it's probably a Dragon Lord. Yeah, the High Elf build, though, it has some Archers. It has some, some Reaver Cav. So it has a couple ways to deal with... Uh, to, to mon with monsters, but it's not like super effective. <clears throat> so we'll see. We will see, my friends. Autogen tourneys.
We have Zero in here, an aficionado of chaos, telling us that the army is doable. The aspiring champs, I mean, I guess if he gets them on spearmen or something, or like flanks with them, I don't really know. They do have vanguard, which is very strange. Is there any rule for once per best of three mulligan? No. No, no mulligans. That would be, you know, maybe if this is a popular series and you guys end up liking this, we could perhaps, uh, you know, do like mulligans and things like that and, you know, give the players some options. And the mulligan thing is kind of fun, actually, because <clears throat> if you think about it, one sec, guys, just got to adjust something. Yeah, so the mulligan is kind of like you can take the risk and get a worse army. There's some like fun tactical aspects to that. So anyways, guys, you saw the armies for both players. Tank is rocking a uh, triple aspiring champ, Halberd, Mirror Guard, Demon Spew. He has some Chaos Warhounds. That's actually really good. The Warhounds will be nice at chasing archers. A Giant, a Shagath, an Exalted Hero, and a Dragon Lord up in the sky. Very, very cool stuff indeed. And now if we take a look at the High Elves, you can see the army. Pretty elite infantry for sure. Swordmasters of Hoeth, archers, an Ilthamar Chariot, a Bolt Thrower, double bird. Now, I wonder how this battle would go. The thing is about Flamespire Phoenixes is they do have pretty good fire resist if memory serves. Let's go ahead and double check this. Yeah, we'll try and get it here. It's kind of like tricky. Come on, bird. Oh my god, that's so annoying. It's like tethering to the wrong character. Yeah, so they have 70% fire re uh, resistance and the uh, the Chaos Lord does do fire damage. So the two Flamespire Phoenixes could really bull the, uh, bully the Chaos Lord out of the sky pretty bad. Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. I ate something I was uh, allergic to last night. And it's uh, made my voice a little bit phlegmy, but it shall clear up soon. We have a princess here as well. You know, Xyphos likes to use these type of characters. It's very much in his purview. He does also have shadow warriors, but, you know, chaos comes. And three big monsters that is hard to deal with. A Shagath, a giant, and a chaos dragon. I mean, as long as the dragon can stay away from the phoenixes in the beginning, he should be okay. Yes. The Von Karstein Vampire Lord has two Vargulf summons. He did, and we didn't see them last game, actually. That actually could have been pretty good for tank last game. Vargulf summons on top of, like, the Iron Drakes, but there were two Slayers, too, so... I don't know how effective. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> the Chaos Lord's certainly in a little bit of trouble. I mean, the odds of getting a double Flamespire Phoenix, that's pretty lucky, for sure. But again, like, you know, the Chaos Army isn't terrible either. The Shagath and the Giant are really, really scary. Like, and what do you have to deal with it? Really, the Shadow Warriors, you have the Heralds of the Wind, and you also have a Princess. But aside from that, yeah, there are, there's archers and a Bolt Thrower, too. That's actually really strong. Yeah, you know what's probably going to happen is Xyphos is just going to, like, sit in the back and really drag this Chaos Army through the mud with his skirmishing. Poor tank. Such is the nature of the fickle gods. And the battle's underway. The Chaos Lord's immediately going to see the two Flamespire Phoenixes, I would imagine, just be like, oh god, not this. Yeah, and again, I think, like, running to the edge of the map might not be bad for the uh, Chaos Lord. Because, like, if he just gets gooned out by the Flamespire Phoenix, that's just going to be GG. I don't know how he could come back from that. It's going to be really tough. Uh, does Chaos have anti-large? Yes, the Shagaths are a really good answer against the Flamespire Phoenix. And you can see immediately that uh, he's trying to land. He's trying to get the Chaos Lord on the ground, just so the Phoenixes have to come down and fight, and he can support with the Shagaths. And this actually is a good play. If he gets his Chaos Lord and, you know, follows up with the Dragon Ogre Shagath and goes after the Shadow Warriors on the ground, then the Phoenixes can't get the freebies. Now, Phoenixes, in the meantime, are landing and going after the Aspiring Champs, which I suppose is, is decent for Chaos. And up in the sky, we do have the Chaos Lord trying to land on the Shadow Warriors, which, again, 100% should. Pulling the Shagath, pulling the Warhounds, and uh, just trying to get that fight here on the ground. And this is a good pick here. Getting the Shadow Warriors here this early is uh, quite nice, especially when there's a Shagath and an Exalted Hero following up. So the Heralds of the Wind are coming in now, but this is good. There's a Shagath nearby, there's an Exalted Hero. There's a couple things here which actually can hurt that Flamespire Phoenix. So here comes the Shaggy. <clears throat> Going to be turning about face. Trying to jump on the Flamespire Phoenix, but... Looks like it's a bit of a wash. The Chaos Lord takes some damage. Uh, the Shadow Warriors took some damage as well. And now the Chaos Lord is pushing back in, but the Demon Spear are pushing in very aggressively as well. On the far side, the Aspiring Warriors, or Champions, actually doing a good amount of damage to that Flamespire Phoenix. And remember, there's no healing here. Neither faction has any Winds of Magic, because Zinch did not choose to bless him with such this game. And yeah, I really like Tank's aggressive play here with the uh, Chaos Lord, because he's pretty much doomed. So at least chasing and getting some incremental value where you can, I think is really, really smart. So he goes on the Shadow Warriors once again. The Dragon Ogre Shagath and the Exalted Hero going to be pushing over here, trying to shut down the Chariot, but the Demon Spew just getting wrecked. Oh my goodness, look at this. Demon Spew just getting crumped by the Chariot, by the Phoenix, by the White Lions. That is a, a brutal, brutal fight for sure. So the Exalted Hero and the Shaggy, where are they going? Hard to say. 
Shadow Warriors take a bit of damage, but now you can see the Phoenix has uh, set its sights here on the very juicy Chaos Dragon and his uh, his fire damage, which makes him uh, pretty much fresh fish. The Shagath has gotten over here with the Exalted Hero, but not too much of a response, unfortunately. The High Elves have so much more mobility, and Chaos doesn't seem to have the tools to keep up with it, especially when they're constantly having to babysit their Lord, which is really, really punishing for sure. But the Chaos Dragon does come down here. He does jump on the uh, Exalted, not Exalted Heroes, the Swordmasters of Hoeth. But the bird's hot on his tail, but there's also a big angry giant coming. The giant might be able to club this bird a little bit and do some damage there. We'll find out in a second. <clears throat> and the Shagath is now fighting the Flamespire Phoenix, which again, I think is a pretty good engagement for him. But losing the Demon's View that early and the Chaos Lord, I mean, that's so painful. Yeah, the Chaos Lord and the Dragon just not doing work here. And the Aspiring Champions just kind of waiting their way in. But I mean, what are you going to do? Even when you get to this High Elf Army, it's stacked so heavily with like elite infantry, which are just a hard counter against the Chaos Infantry. The monsters, again, are pretty good, but I don't know what you could do with that Chaos Sword. Yeah, the Phoenixes are uh, are just brutal here. One of them's actually very beat up. The Dragon Ogre Shagath has been winning this fight, but it's also being shot by the Bolt Thrower and by some archers, so that's a tough situation. Mirror Guard coming in the far side as well, relatively quick. I believe they have like 40 speed, 38, so pretty fast there. And the Giant is doing some damage. You can see the Flamespire Phoenix is getting worn down. My big concern, though, for Tank is the fact that the Flamespire Phoenixes are... Uh, are going to be able to, you know, just heal if you get them low. And he's done a good job considering, right? This Flame Star Phoenix is very, very damaged. And there's still a Giant and a Shagath rampaging here in the center. And the Swordmasters of Hoeth are going down. Mirror Guard have engaged. I mean, if there's going to be a time just, I guess, stacking the Giants on top of one another, trying to get the value you can is his best bet. Now, there are some Doggos in the back. If you could get these Chaos Warhounds to shut down the Eagle Claw Bolter somehow, that would be super clutch. Balance of Power is very, very heavily favored for the High Elves. The Chaos Sword has come back. He only has 500 HP, though, so not going to be terribly substantial. And now the Shagath is being attacked. Negative leadership, 7. It looks like it is stabilizing, and the birds are kind of getting wants on, if you look. You can see this one Flamestar Phoenix is taking a lot of damage, and the Giant does finish it off! Look at that! So very good scrapping here by Tank, and now the Giant has switched its sights here onto the other Flamespire Phoenix. And, uh, yeah, he's going for it. It just, yeah, I don't know. There's something about, yeah, Chaos for Autogen. I don't know how I feel about that. It's tricky. I mean, I guess they have a pretty narrow roster, so you can more or less know that you're going to get certain things. So the Chaos Giant going in once again, beating on the bird. The Shagath is retreating. Now, if that Shagath does rally, that could be quite nice. But Xyphos, of course, a very savvy player here, is not going to let that happen. He does use the Volley of Arrows from the Princess to punish the Dragon Ogre Shagath here. And the Chaos Giant is making his last Valiant stand against the hordes of birds! But yeah, really the X-Factor uh, factor of this game was the fact that the uh, Chaos Lord was just pretty much useless. And not by any fault of Tank. It just wasn't possible for it to be good against Double Flames for Phoenix. And there you have it, guys. Xyphos with the 2-0. Yeah, that's really tough. Yeah, because Phoenixes have 70% fire resist and the, uh, the Dragon does fire damage. So it's like just such a hard counter. Like, you can't even fight it. Normally, a, a, like a Dragon without fire damage could potentially fight those Phoenixes. But in that, in that case, no. It just wasn't possible. All right, guys, so that's going to be our first one. Let's go ahead and uh, update the brackets. So we're going to head on over to the brackets. And Xyphos will be advancing to the grand finals of today's event. And let's say GGG tank. Had no chance there, tank. <laughs> well played, well played. All right. See you in finals, Xyphos. You know, tank did a really good job considering what he was given. I have to say that. His aggressive dragon play was really good. Like, pushing up and, and going for the kill. Yeah. <laughs> that was something. Alright, so now we have Falcon versus Hyali Nale. So let's go ahead and grab those guys. Alright, one sec. That is the wrong Discord. Perfect. So they're going to join the lobby. And they are all set. So I'm going to go back now to the screen and uh, we'll get the nameplate set up and then we're good to party, guys. All right, so on this side we have Kiali Nali, I believe. Oh my god, no, not a Lizardman mirror. Please no. No god, no. <laughs> okay, Felcon's army's autogen. Kiali's army's autogen. Oh my god, guys. This is going to be a Lizardman mirror match. It seems like they planned this. All right, so Falcon is on this side. Why are the gods so cruel this early in the morning to make me cast a cursed <laughs> mirror match? Let's put Yali here. All right, so let's break it down. 
For Felcon, he's playing the Cult of Sotek. He has a Slon Mage of Light, which is nice. He got a Slon. He got a Sars front line, three Feral Cold Ones, the Colossodon Rippers, or Hunters. He got an Ancient Salamander and a Sacred Croxagor for his army. Yeah, Autogen Coast would be really, really strange for sure. So yeah, it's honestly not the worst army in the world. I mean, he got a Salamander. He got some Anti-Large with the Colossodon Hunters, a good Sars front line with some... Oh my god, so in Autogen, it pulls from the campaign unique units. Oh my god, so he got a Blessed Sars Warrior with the shield. Oh no. Oh man, I did not think of that at all. So we'll see if people discover that because we'll just let it slide. Who cares? I mean, but if you go Empire, oh my god. All right, so for Yali Nale... He got a Slime Age of Fire. Okay. Two Skink Chiefs on foot. Legion of Chakwa, Temple Guard, two Chameleons. Oh, he got an Engine of the Gods. And a Bastilodon. Oh, man. And a Blessed Skink. Oh, my God. This is just straight up anarchy. All right, guys. Let's get this party started and have some fun. We have Itza, Gorok's sub-faction against the Cult of Sotek. <clears throat> So apparently, yeah, they get their special units. Darth Pendragon. Sure, man. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good, dude. Hope you're doing well, Darth. If you guys see Darth Pendragon in chat, he uh, edited my last video, the uh, the best unit for each faction. So a lot of people are like, wow, the editing's so good. Well, that's uh, it's, it's, it's his doing. He's done a very good job. More videos to come. <laughs> Matthew's like, I'll donate. Yeah, I don't know. I think I, I do like... Hiali's army probably a little bit more because he doesn't have the triple feral cold one. And the two skink chiefs on foot are actually like a decent poke. And Piatron, yo turn, loving the content, mate. Keep it up. Dude, thank you, man. Thank you for that very generous donation. Yeah, I don't know. So Hiali has a fire slon though, which is going to be interesting. A Bastilodon, an engine of the gods. I do like the double skink chief. And he does also have cold one spear riders. Like, yeah, I think Kiali's army might be a little bit more well-rounded. Granted, Falcon has some really good anti-large here with the uh, Colossodon Hunters. And Falcon's front line is also probably a little bit better. He's got a lot of Saurus, including a Blessed Saurus. And he does have a Sacred Croxagore as well. Yeah, Feral Cold Ones are pretty mediocre. Yes, uh, Mackenzie. So typically, Kiali, when he does play Lizards, he, he plays like a Kiting style from what I've seen, using like Salamanders and Skinks. He's a really, really good player, for sure. Uh, Hiali Nali was in the last Ever Chosen. I believe he got to the Grand Finals. Yeah, he at the last Ever Chosen, I think Hiali was in the Grand Finals of the Ever Chosen against Felcon. and lost 3-1, but he did win a game, and the other ones were very close as well, so he's clearly a very good player. Uh, the casters have all spells. Yes, you can't change anything. We might adapt the rules. Jason, thank you for the 999. Can we get another Golden Expedition Rebellion? Dude. We need, we need an Empire Autogen, Jason. Thank you, Mr. Pig. Now, Kelly does have the Basilodon with the Solar Engine as well. He's also got his beloved Skinks. I do love the double uh, Skink Chief here. <clears throat> and you know, since we have an Engine of the God. Thank you again, Mr. Pig. There's going to be some uh, bombardments. Up in the sky, we do have the Colossodon Hunters. I would imagine that's going to be a prime target for uh, for Kelly's skirmishing. So he's probably going to get his uh, Bastilodon and start shooting those guys. There's an Ancient Salamander, though, here from Felcon. The Ancient Salamander does have some nice range. You can see the Power Fist Croxagores are scooting up, and Felcon's front line is pretty scary. And also, he's got a Light Slon. Light Slons are really good for heavy front lines because you can cast Barona's Time Warp and just give a ton of melee attack to the Saurus. It's very, very powerful, uh, powerful for sure. Now, where oh where is this Ancient Salamander going to go? Blessed units are usually just a little bit better. Uh, we'll try and find some. Hold on. So we have the Skinks, we have the Saurus. Uh, Blessed Saurus Warriors, yeah, so they have perfect vigor and just better stats. Ooh, nice rock drop right there. Hyali Nale got a fat rock drop right on top of the Saurus Warriors with shields. That was a thing of beauty right there. Man, that was really good. Took those guys down to about half health. This is the uh, Palhawk Sentinel, so they have the special rock drop. And now we do have the Laser Dino, so the Basilodon with the Solar Engine is going to be, I think, opening up here on the Colossodon Hunters. I think that's where I saw the first shot. But what I'm really waiting for this entire cast is simply to see Hiala use the Ancient Stegodon to drop some bows with the uh, Engine of the Gods. So yeah, the Ripperdactyls do take a little bit of free damage. Hiala with the Kite, of course, he does have double Skink Chief on foot, so he should be kiting, 100%. The Skink Chiefs are actually targeting down the uh, Ancient Salamander, and a Fireball coming in from the Fire Slon going after the Ancient Salamander. Ooh, and he actually gets it. Ancient Salamander took a bit of damage. Falcon tried to react with the Shield of the Old Ones, but that Fireball did hit true and did some really good damage. So, so far, Hiali's Kite, you can see uh, both of these guys are 
very skilled top tier Lizardman player, so it's going to be fun to see this for sure. Salamander shooting in, going into the Spears here, the Legion of Chiqua, and taking out one model. Michele responds immediately using the Shield of Chiqua to mitigate 44% of that damage. And now Felcon's moving in. Oh, that's so good from Michele. So Felcon used the Bronos Time Warp to try and buff up his front line. Now also it does give them speed, but then Yali just kites it out. I mean, he has the kite, no need to take that engagement. Falcon has a massive advantage in the front line, so just play it safe. The Feral Cold Ones are charging as well. Looks like they're gonna get pretty aggressive now. They can Rampage, and if they Rampage into Spears, that could be quite bad, but now Falcon looks like he's closing in for the Death Blow here. Counter Charge coming in from Yali and Ali, but it is gonna be charging into the Blessed Sar, so a little bit of a misplay there from Yali. He overextended his charges pretty hard, and that could honestly give Falcon a huge advantage here in this game. Glossodon Hunters have engaged here on the Glorious Epistilodon. A nice net from Felcon. So Felcon comes in with a net. Hiali makes one mistake with his Cav, overextends, and then suddenly Felcon's here with a net. And are we going to be seeing the Engine of the Gods? Not quite yet. So frontline engagements are underway. We have Temple Guard here. Oh, look at that! Piercing Bolts coming down from the Fire Slon. And oh, Engine of the Gods. Is it going to hit anything? Probably not, but it looks really cool. So here comes the Engine of the Gods. The Ancient Salamander has engaged in combat as well. And, uh, yeah, the Engine of the Gods missed, I think. Oh, no, is it going to get these Saurus? Maybe so. Oh, is it going to get these guys? Oh, it comes up to the high ground, and oh, it just barely misses them. But also a Banishment coming in from the Fire Slon as well does hammer Felcon's front line. Now, as far as the Mounts of Power goes, it's uh, pretty close. Maybe slightly favored for Hyale, but not by too much. Engine of the Gods is still pretty healthy. The uh, Slime Mage of Fire. A little bit surrounded, though. He's got to be careful. <clears throat> and the Colossodon Hunters are still alive. And it looks like they've done some serious damage. Actually, maybe taking out that laser dino? No, he's actually just been pushed back. So Burning Head going right down the pipe as well from the Fire Salon. Might be able to roast some of the Saurus Warriors on the far side. Looks like it does make contact, doing a ton of damage, and actually helping Heli's Temple Guard on this side of the battlefield win. Now here we do have the double Skink Chief. And the Skink Chiefs are, uh, what are they shooting? Yeah, the Skink Chiefs are going to be really annoying to get rid of. But now Felcon is going for a bit of an Alpha Strike, using his Colossodon Hunters, his Feral Cold Ones, and trying to surround and take down the Ancient Stegodon. Up at the high ground, we have a bunch of uh, Sara Spears chasing down the Chode, being kited by Hyali. Piercing Bolts going in once again. And the Piercing Bolts seem to do some pretty good damage against the Saurus, but Hyali really just trying to stabilize here in this position. You can see he's just kind of pulling back and trying to get away from the uh, beatdown of those Power Fist Croxagors. But I think if Falcon can get his paws and finish off the Ancient Stegodon, that could be a way for him to win this game. And Hyali with a little bit of a misplay. Yali does actually have some Temple Guard here that are very healthy, and if he moved the Temple Guard in to help the Stegodon, he could potentially, you know, win this fight. Like, move in the Palhawk's Sentinels, move in the Temple Guard, and I think this Ancient Zagadon would be saved. Fireball coming in from the Salon, shooting downtown. Hyali does now realize that the Temple Guard are nearby and is going to be pushing in, but it might be too late. Negative one leadership. It looks like this guy might be broken. Cold-Blooded tries to save him, but he's just a second too late. And it looks like the Ancient Zagadon does break. However, you know, Hyali does have the mobile advantage. With the Skink Chiefs, he could potentially save this by just poking off some of the Feral Cold Ones, but... I don't know, the Feral Cold Ones might just rampage and chase off this Ancient Stegodon, which would be huge value. And you can see with the Ancient Stegodon breaking, it actually pulls the Bounce of Power back towards even. And Felcon with his Power Fist Croc scores, man, just like these players, seeing these top tier players play with these like Haggard units is so much fun. But Felcon is able to get his uh, Power Fist Croc scores and attack the Slon Mage Priest of Fire. Shield of the Old Ones and Cascading Fire Cloak is active. You almost never see Lore of Fire with the Dinos. It's, it's a pretty rare sighting for sure. But yeah, the Ancient Stegodon looks like it's doomed. Felcon really milking the maximum value he can from these Feral Cold Ones. Perhaps learning that maybe they're not so bad in the Lizardmen uh, Mirror Match. Chasing down that Ancient Stegody? No joke. So now we have two Skink Chiefs being attacked by Velociraptors. Palhawks and Sentinels coming in to try and save the Fire Slon, but it's looking a little bit grim bones for the Fire Slon up on the high ground. Mind Leadership, he does get Cold Blood from one of his Skink Chiefs to keep him fighting. And will he be stabilized? The Colossodon Hunters are certainly quite pissed off. Oh man, and they feast on that Slon's soul even before he breaks! Oh no, we have a, a a moment of lag. Let me minimize, make sure it's not on my end. No, I'm all good, okay. So someone crashed, maybe. I think one of the players may have uh, disconnected or something. We'll see. Hyali Nale has dropped from the game. Oh, uh, Hyali, no. We'll play it by ear though. We'll see what the players want to do. It was a pretty even battle. I think Felcon was going to win it, but uh, if they want to replay it, we can. But, like, who cares? That battle was more or less, uh, I think, over. Because the Slon died, the Stagodon died, Felcon still had a lot of stuff. Alright. So we'll get Hyale back, and uh, we'll get this party started. We'll see what they want to do. Because today is a very casual tournament, so... We're just having some fun. We're just having some fun, guys. Yeah, so Hyale dropped there, but I think the game was won for Felcon. But um, we'll play it by ear. 
you two can replay with a different match. No me. Or just, or if you agree on who won. Just let me know. That was a great game though. That was a really good game. Yeah, it was a GG for sure. I don't know. It's normally, you know, if we were in like a different time, uh, kind of tournament, we would probably just replay it since the balance bar was so even. Um, the, the good old Alt F4, no. They're, they're good friends, Yale and Felcon, so. What about same different matchups for different armies? Hey, Yale. He's back. So you two can replay your game if you felt it was still winnable. PLA. He did have the double skink chief. The double skink chiefs could have done something if they had some uh, skinks and skirmishing elements left, so. Game, a different match, please. All right. <laughs> We're gonna do a different match though. That was fun for sure. All right, so I'm gonna switch the map just to make it a little bit interesting. And uh, Toothgrass Hill, Tower of Poeth. Tower of Poeth is good. All right, so we'll let them uh, figure it out. Uh, so Joker, you just have to message me, really. Yeah, that's it. Uh, the stream hasn't been going for too long, so for anybody, you guys just joining in. <laughs> so there's, these guys are like super hard set on replaying that Lizardman matchup. Okay, you know what, I'm sold. Their armies are pretty fun. So, all right, so for Falcon, we have Tehenowin, we have a Skink Chief, we have Saurus, we have double Feral Stegadon, and we do also have an Ancient Stegadon. Now for Hyale, it's fine. Go for it. And for Hyale, where is all his money spent? So Hyale has a Red Crested Skink Chief, a Skink Priest of Heavens, a Skink Chief, Legion of Chiqua, a Blessed... He has like no front line here. And also the Thunderous one. Oh my god. Look at that meaty army he's got there. <clears throat> They're really set on it. Clearly very excited, so I'm not going to be a, a, you know, a party ruiner. Seems like seems like a fun uh, matchup, anyways. Mirror matches are just tricky to cast, but that was a very fun, heated game. I felt like that last one was about to be kind of decided, but we'll just go again. Who cares? More games, right? Because now there's like no army pick phase, so the the games are a lot quicker. So the more, the merrier. All right, so players are loading in here. We're uh, gonna rule a replay here. Yes. We had an amazing first game series too. It was so good. Tank and uh, Zyphos had some really fun games. So the winner of this will uh, face Tank and Zy or will face uh, Zyphos in the grand finals. So yeah, like you guys saw for the forces of Hyale, uh, he basically has no front line. He's got Skinks, he's got Powhawks as Sentinels, he's got Ripper Dactyls. He does have a Skink Chief and a Heaven's Caster, which is really good. But two big beasties, a Red Crested Skink Chief plus the Thunderous one. Legion of Chiqua and uh, Coldland Spear Riders. Very strange army here. Now for Falcon, they both have <laughs> they both have two skinks, but one of the skinks is blessed from uh, Hyale, which is funny. But Falcon got some chameleons. We have an ancient Stegadon. We have two feral Stegadons, a skink chief, a better front line for sure. And Tehedowin is actually up on his steed. That's uh, pretty fun. Wow, I, I don't know what to say. I I, I honestly up in the sky though the uh, Ripper Dactyls are going to be something that Tehedowin has to worry about but he does have support on the ground in the form of uh, chameleons and things like that. Aristodemos, today we are playing an auto-generated tournament. So it's a uh, best of threes and a best of five finals with all auto-gens. So right now it's Felcon versus Yale. It's their first game because they did have a crash and so we decided to replay here. I think he's like, it, was a, it wasn't like one of those lag crashes. I honestly think he might've just like kicked out his cable or something. We have a donation coming in from Careless. Glad to see you're back streaming. Thanks for all the content, dude. I'm so glad to be back. And thank you for your support, man. Got you covered. Entertainment to come, brother. Chameleon Skink shooting in. Going after the Skink Chief. Felcon's forces advancing the dreaded double Stegadon. Feral Stegadon, mind you. You know, Beastman would be really fun to autogen, too. You, you, you'd probably get a lot of, like, Minotaurs and Spawn and, like, things like that. Because there's so many variants of the Minotaur. Like, I feel like you could get that. I'm sure there's actually a science to, like, which factions are best in autogen. If you really want to, like, break into it. Anyways, 
Falcon's forces are advancing. A wind blast timing. Oh, pretty decent wind blast. Uh, not the best, but he, at least he does have a caster. Tehenowin is here as well. So Falcon did get Tehenowin for his lord, which means he has Manticore summons, which is always good. So he could probably summon Manticores and just have them chase the Skink Priest. I think that's going to be his course of action. Now up in the sky, we do have a fight between Hyali Nale's uh, Palhawks of Sentinels and Falcon's Palhawks of Sentinels. Not really sure what was going on there. I think trying to bait them in maybe and just like wait for the Ripper Dactyls to get in and engage. A little bit hard to say. Nonetheless, though, <clears throat> Hyali doesn't really have a front line. But he does have this mighty Red Crested Skink Chief on this uh, big old beastie here. And here Falcon's coming in pretty hot with the Blessed, blessed Cold One Spear Riders. These guys are no mere Spear Riders. And Hyali coming in with the counter charge and also the harmonic convergence. Might be able to catch him, but Falcon has a really good layer of support here. You can see Falcon with the chameleon shooting in. But with harmonic convergence, it's looking a little bit scary actually for Hyali over here because it would appear that Falcon has like more numbers. He's got Tehanowin coming in. Though the harmonic convergence is making them a lot stronger, it looks like there's going to be uh, some sort of a spell here. Maybe a Uranin's Thunderbolt. Hard to say. We'll find out here in just a second. Yep. Zapping into the back. And the terror route coming in because the Skin Chief got in. With Cold-Blooded, Warrior's Crest, and Foe Seeker, suddenly Hyali wins this engagement. That's actually really big. In the meantime, Heaven's Caster coming in. We do have the Thunderous One thundering its way over. And Hyali's able to win that engagement, which I really didn't think he was going to. Felcon had such a good layer of uh, Skink support, but when the Thunderous One came in and the Harmonic Convergent, uh, the Harmonic Convergence also was layered on top of all that, I think it was pretty substantial. So suddenly we have a monster match. We have Feral Stegodons from Felcon. We also have a Manticore Summon coming in. So the Manticore Summon not being used to goon out the little characters, but rather going for a big fight here. But honestly, I think Yali is now in a very commanding position. The Red Crested Skink Chief is a very powerful combatant and should be able to win against these Feral Stegodons, especially with all the support he has nearby. Felcon charging in with the Palhawks of Sentinels in the back, but Tehenowin, man, Tehenowin is getting wrecked. I did not notice this. So Tehenowin just up in the sky, being blasted by the Skink Chief and by the Chameleons. And honestly, I think that's going to be game one going for Hyale here in this mirror match. <clears throat> Insane stuff. You get the Red Crest, the Skink Chief, and the Thunderous One able to really bully this fight. You can see the Feral Stegodons are wavering. The Ancient Stegodon from Felcon is wavering. And Felcon withdraws knowing it's over. Man! So Hyale winning that big fight over there was really a huge deciding factor. The Harmonic Convergence and the Red Crest, the Skink Chief follow-up was super clutch. Yes. So that is going to be game one. Going to uh, Hyali and Ale here in this best of three. <clears throat> All right, so it's updated. Next map is going to be the Valley of Thieves. <laughs> Please, no more mirrors. Please. <laughs> I, I beg you. I am too weak, Anakin. Please help me. <laughs> no more mirror matches, come on. All right, so Falcon and uh, Falcon. Hyali is going chaos. We have a donation from Adam V. Thank you so much. Autogen ZA, dude. I know. Okay, so we have chaos versus Norska. So Falcon's Autogen is here. Oh my god, look at these armies. So Falcon got Wolfric, probably on a horse. He got a Fremier Bale Fiend of Shadows. Uh, a miscellaneous Marauder front line, which is fine. He got some Hunters, a Chariot, two Hounds, Skin Wolves, and a Frostworm. Hey, that's not bad. So he got a Frostworm. Very, very good stuff. And now for Hyali Nale, he got a Chaos Lord who appears to be either on foot or on horse. An Exalted Hero. A miscellaneous front line of Chaos, just trash. Uh, and But he got double Hell Cannon. So he got Soul of Damnation plus a regular Hell Cannon, which is pretty exciting stuff. I actually really like the build, the double Hell Cannon here. But again, Felcon has magic and shadows to boot, which is really good. It's going to be a hard one for Hyali, but on an open map like this with double Hell Cannon, he could certainly get some huge value. All right, guys, so Chaos vs. Norska. Uh, yes. We will drop a link to uh, Discord in the next uh, 10 minutes or so. Oh my god, both Vampire Autogen. Chaos is uh, definitely a weird... You gotta Chaos is a tricky faction, but they, they have some tools that are pretty good. All right, guys, and here we go. Game two between Falcon and Hyali Nale. The scrap of scraps. So Hyali Nale coming in with the double Hell Cannon. Not by his own volition. He does have an Exalted Hero on horseback. And a Chaos Lord on foot. And uh, yeah, his front line's going to be okay against the Norskin front line. I mean, aside from the Forsaken, he does have uh, Chaos Trolls and two spawns. Spawn are actually not bad against like basic Marauder infantry. And the man score is useful for like terror routing and fighting things up in the sky, potentially. Although the Frostworm will win that fight. 
But yeah, it's a funny little army for sure. The Hell Cannons, he's really got to get value out of those Hell Cannons. I mean, the Hell Cannons could feasibly, though, like nuke this Norskin front line. <clears throat> and for Felcon, we have a Frostworm. We do also have a Famir Balefiend on the far side. We got some Skin Wolves. We got some Hounds. That's a little bit concerning for Hyale. The fact that Felcon has so much backline harass in the form of these Norskin Warhounds is uh, is pretty good against those Hell Cannons. Because, you know, then Hyale has to really dedicate resources to protecting the Hell Cannons. I would honestly probably just leave Forsaken and spawn back there and just like, guard it with those units. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. So, uh, Xandis, we did actually see a Vampire Count autogen earlier. It was pretty okay, but the dwarves that they were fighting definitely got uh, a really fun army with quad iron drakes. <laughs> yeah. Ant-Man, I know. The autogen, it's been a long time. It was it was like kind of a staple of the channel way back when. I, I guess I got to start doing it. I used to play on ladder and autogen and try and get wins, and occasionally we would. It was really fun. Anyways, guys, the battle is underway. The Hell Cannons are now scooting up. Felcon knows he needs to close the distance. Uh, Felcon does have a pretty big advantage in respect to magic because there was no magic for the Chaos Forces. The Hell Cannon with a direct hit here on the Marauder Champions. Brutal stuff. Felcon, of course, trying to dodge it, but he is certainly not out of dodge yet. So some of the Chariots are coming in, but the Trolls are a great answer against the Chariots. If he has, like, Spawn or Trolls, both are very capable of blocking up the charge of a Chariot. Here comes another Hell Cannon shot going in and missing. So the Hell Cannon's not the best value so far. Breath Attack coming in from the Dragon. Does clip the Mirror Guard, but nothing serious. Just five models and a little bit of topical damage. So the Hell Cannon's still blasting in. Misses once again. So, so far, not the best Hell Cannon shots. But here comes another one. Oh, that one was okay. Does hit those, uh, those Berserkers as they do approach. And over here, we have a pretty big monster fight. So here we have an Exalted Hero. We have Spawn. We have Hounds fighting. But this looks like it's going to be pretty favored for Felcon because he's got pretty good numbers. The Chaos Warhounds are broken. And the Manticore is going to lose heavily to the Dragon. So, yeah, the Manticore should probably just run at this point. Granted, the Frostworm is really good at slowing things down. So Berserker's getting hammered really hard, and now the Marauder Champions are as well. So finally those uh, Hell Cannons are starting to pay their dues. But winning this fight over here for Felcon was quite nice. The Dragon's coming in. Mirror Guard fighting as well. The Exalted Hero hot on the tail of that Frost from here. But the Manticore is now Rampaging, and Feebling Foe is activated. And uh, yeah, get some decent shots there. Chaos Spawn are going to get absolutely destroyed. Skin Wolves are a great answer against those units. And now the Frontline fighting is underway as the Hell Cannons continue to pound into these forces. And honestly, they're doing pretty good. But the Manticore rampaging, and of course this fight going badly for the spawn is really unfortunate, because what's going to happen now is Falcon's going to destroy the spawn, get the Hounds, and both Hell Cannons are about to be cleaned up, and I really think Yali made a huge mistake by not leaving something back here to protect these. Like, honestly, just like the Forsaken would have been really good, because they can fend off the Doggos really quickly. But now the Dogs are going to be feasting on the souls of those Chaos Dwarfs. However, I mean, the frontline fight really isn't going bad for Chaos. There's many things that are you're winning for them, right? But with both Hell Cannons going down like that, I just don't see it, you know, going better for them. The Chaos Lord fighting here as well. Some of the spawn are trying to get back here to peel off the Hounds. Felcon getting one group of Norskin Warhounds on top of each of the Hell Cannons, which is pretty bad. I mean, maybe Hyale can save one. Just maybe. You can see the Norskin front line is, is pretty much destroyed. Yeah, you can see the Spears are running, Berserkers are running, Great Weapons are running, Marauders are still fighting, the Champions are very low. The front line fight did go pretty well. And now it looks like the Chaos Spawn do come back here and they push off the Norskin Warhounds, which is really nice. I'd actually push him off the battlefield, but the other Hell Cannon is 100% KO'd. There is uh, not going to be too many ways to protect this bad boy. And here we have the Exalted Hero running for the hills. 42 speed being chased by a very powerful Predator. And also, oh, Wolfric's on foot. Wolfric's been on foot this whole time, just like waddling after his prey. Yeah, Hyale, honestly, if he didn't lose that Hell Cannon, I think he might be in okay shape here. He still got his Chaos Lord and the two Hell Cannons. But yeah, the Dragos are coming back again. Ugh, they're just so sticky. Over on the far side, we have some trolls being chased off by the Norskin Skin Wolves. And that's going to be game. Looks like Felcon. Felcon definitely had a better army, in my opinion. Um, he had, you know, Wolfric. He had a Frostworm. He had Magic. He had a really good, like, mobile core of Skin Wolves with uh, Hounds, which is quite nice against anything mobile backline. Although against Chaos, I mean, it could have been different, right? Those guys could have been useless had they not gotten, like, double Hell Cannon. So one Hell Cannon is back online. The battle's still going. Aspiring Champion's fighting here. And we also do have the Mirror Guard fighting as well. The Chaos Lord, though, is really in dire straits. Uh, Wolfric greatly outmatches him. And Feebling Foe, plus Hunter of Champions, it's uh, really, really powerful. Hell Cannon Blasting, though, I mean, but it was a good fight. It was a pretty, you know, good scrap, for sure. I mean, Norska is super beat up. So at least it was a Pyrrhic victory. The Mirror Guard going here. Felcon, the Dark Lord of Norska, coming in once again with his Skin Wolves. But this is going to be tying up the series, guys. It's 1-1 right now. Assuming this game goes to Norska, which I'm pretty sure it will here. As that hell, when that Hell Cannon falls, it's going to trigger army losses. Because that thing is like the last bastion of power here for the Warriors of Chaos. And you can see as, as soon as it gets attacked, 
that triggers army losses. And that is going to be game two for Falcon and his Norskins. Yes. Yes, indeed. I know the model count was really low. I think one of the armies had like 270 or something. So now, guys, we go to our next match. We're very excited here. Felcon with a glorious victory with his Norskin tribes. Will Felcon advance to the finals? Kjali Nale. Felcon here in the final duel of fates. So we'll do, uh, we'll do, uh, yeah, Tyra Poeth is fine. So we have a green skin autogen. Oh man, look at Felcon's army. He got a goblin great shaman. Black orcs, archers. Oh my god, just filled up to the brim with haggard units. And Hyale, oh my god, guys, look at what Hyale gets. Hyale gets Franz, an Empire Captain, Swords of Ulrich, Eldred's Guard, Nordland Mariners, Karelberg Greatswords. And he also has War Wagon, Great Cannon, and a Hellstorm Rocket Battery. Oh my god. This is going to be a pure circus. Let's get this party started. Guys, we got your Empire Autogen, and he got four of the special units. <laughs> the Karaburg Greatswords, like the Nordland Mariners. Oh my god. This is just... I don't know. That Empire Army is, is quite magnificent. But so is the Goblin Army. I'm a little bit concerned for Hela. I don't know if he's going to be able to protect everything against the Goblins. Because like the Goblins are going to swarm all over those artilleries. There's a Mortar Wagon. There's a Hellstorm. Yeah. <laughs> the campaign units. Xyphos, you got to go Norska. Because Norska, if you autogen, there's a chance you can get the really OP Norskan campaign units. Oh, man. This is going to be so fun. I don't think... I wonder if Falcon's aware that this can happen. Like, I feel like, yeah, the Empire got some good stuff, but they also really got punished with, like, a war wagon. Because, like, more or less everything on the screen skin army is functional and useful to an extent. Like, everything can be used well. But for the Empire army, yeah, it has some real stinkers. Franz is on foot, too, with no items. I have a great cannon. All right, let's look at the Swords of Ulrich. So what do they even do? Okay, so they're just Frenzy Swordsmen, so that's nothing game-breaking. Caribou Great Swords have a... Uh... Oh, melee attack nearby, and they're unbreakable. Oh my god, unbreakable Great Swords with, like... With, uh, what is that? Yeah, with the AoE buff. He's got Reichsguard, Demogriff Knights. He also has the Mortar Wagon. He's got the Nordland Mariners, the proud halberdiers of uh, Nordland with their uh, perfect vigor. They're rowdy. Going to be defending back here, and oh my god, this is just such a meme. An Eldred Spear Guard. So these are uh, the Balthazar Gelt Spearmen, which have like freaking 70 armor. <laughs> oh man, guys. This is magical. Yeah, you know, the wagon at least is a chariot of sorts. It can run over some goblins, but uh, what missile pieces did he get? He got just regular handgunners. Okay. Yeah, I'm a little bit concerned. I think Fel with Falcon's control, he's going to be really good at controlling a huge army like that. And, like, it's going to be hard for the Empire to defend all its assets here. The wagon is going to carry. You guys think so? So, Albert, this is an auto-generated tournament. So, everything is random. The armies are random. I mean, they get to pick their factions, but aside from that, everything is random. You know, if we, if you guys really do enjoy the auto-gen, we can do this more at least once a week. And we can, uh, or maybe even twice, who knows. And we can have you guys pick the factions for the players. That could be something we could do. Yeah, the Goblin Army for Felcon is is, is just... I, I would go into like talking about it, but I feel like an autogen, it's kind of pointless to discuss the compositions because it's just random. But it's literally just a shit ton of goblins and orcs. Like, it's just completely all over the place. There's some black orcs. I mean, some uh, some pig calf. Savage orc pig calf. Yeah, warboy big incel. They'll be pretty good against the Empire calf, actually. Oh my god, Felcon's army is massive. And he's got a goblin great shaman, so... Hellstrom Rocket Battery, going to be unleashing its first salvos here, and the Mortar Wagon. So yeah, there's a lot of artillery. <laughs> and the Orc Boys are getting pounded. He immediately needs to get that Hellstorm and start shooting the Black Orcs, though. He needs to take out those guys, because the Black Orcs are one of the few units that can really effectively deal with the uh, Karabur Greatswords. Yeah, so we'll see. So the Mortar Wagon's still shooting into the uh, frontal targets. Yali and Ali sees a massive Goblin Horde coming. He does have Reichsguard and an Empire Captain in the forest. And Falcon's coming in with Wolf Riders now, but uh, there are some handgunners nearby who can probably fend them off. Yeah, they take uh, quite a pounding there from those handgunners. And if we look, yes, the Hellstorm Rocket Batter, Hiale, of course, being a very savvy tournament player, is going to be switching onto the Black Orcs, which is very wise indeed. I believe we have a Great Cannon as well. I don't know what the Great Cannon's targeting, but I would imagine it's maybe going after the Black Orcs, or, yeah, the Goblin Great Shaman appears from the forest for a second, but then lurks back into the trees. 
And he does use a Vindictive Glare and actually takes out one of the Hellstorm Rocket Battery uh, batteries. That's very, very good play there. Felcon, ever the crafty player here. And the Goblin lurks back into the tree line. But so far, the Empire Artillery is really hammering the Greenskin lines as they do advance. Black Orcs have taken a lot of HP damage. Not too many models lost. They've only lost 8 of their 60 models. So they're still more or less in good shape. The Doomdiver Catapult, what is it shooting at? It looks like it might be shooting at the, the Hellstorm Rocket Battery. Why does this Hellstorm seem to have so much ammo? Maybe it got buffed and I just didn't notice or something. Yeah, and the Doom Diver Catapults are going after the Nordland Mariners. So they're going after the Halberd units, which are defending here. And now Falcon emerges from the forest. Ever the sneaky git with his Goblin Wolf Riders. Trying to get some freebies where he can. The Doom Diver Catapults continuing to rain fire. Another Vindictive Glare. Man, and the Hellstorm Rocket Battery is almost out. Man, Falcon just with great plays here. So the Hellstorm only has one uh, piece left, which means the Vindictive Glare and the Doom Diver Catapults have really accomplished their job of doing some serious damage here. Now here we do have a charge from the Reichsguard Knights, just getting some freebies on Goblins, and this is actually really good for uh, Hyale, because now he gets the Reichsguard Knights and goes and finishes the Doomdiver Catapult, and really helps to normalize the current situation. Although I don't think anything is normal today. So now we have the Swords of Ulrich, and the uh, Caribou Greatswords are going to be engaging against the Goblins here. And uh, these Greatswords are going to be like lawnmowers. Their stats are really good. If you look, you can see, uh, well, I don't know, that many wad Goblins with poison, that could be an issue for them. Denver Knights are going to be hammering in. We now have the uh, regular Greatswords coming in to engage those Gobbos. And yeah, pretty good frontline engagements for the Empire, especially with Demis coming in. It's a shame he didn't get the Royal Outdoor of Griffites. He could get some like huge terror routes. Karl Franz wielding Galmaraz is coming in on foot <laughs> to start doing some battle. And the Goblins are actually turning and running very quickly. But now there's Squigs and oh man, Falcon coming in for the Alpha Strike. Savage Orc, poor boy Biggins. Just coming in fully wad up. Going to be charging in. And it looks like the Denver Knights just barely get away. But Franz fighting... Pretty much last standing it here with his uh, Caribou Greatswords. I don't know if he's going to be able to hold. Hard to say. Yali Nolly with the Hand Gunners back here. Some Greatswords defending him. Demogriff Knights defending as well. We do also have the Empire Captain. Now what do we have online? We still have the Great Cannon. The Hellstorm Rocket Battery is pretty much offline. Oh, Curse of the Bad Moon is coming, guys! Oh yeah, look at it dropping the base all over those Greatswords right there. And that actually did some really good damage. Caribou Greatswords are unbreakable. Up to 97 kills! We also have the Nordland Mariners fighting these Pig Cav. The Great Swords are doing well, and it looks like maybe the Sons of Sigmar will hold this. Falcon doing his best to shut down the Great Cannon. It looks like he might do that in just a moment, but the Goblins might be running for the hills. <laughs> they might be. I don't know. Maybe this engagement wasn't... Yeah, he's sitting too long in the Halberds. He has so much mobility. I don't think he needs to sit there. Like, just pull back with all your cav and go punish the other units across the battlefield, like the wagons and these hand gunners, because the Empire no longer has mobility. But again, I think Falcon knows this, and he's pulling back. He obviously is a much better player than I am, so I'm sure he's very aware of all the mistakes that are happening here. And now he does shut down the Great Cannon. Excellent play, taking down the Empire Ranged, really allowing him to have more or less free range. So Reichsguard Knights are coming back in, but they are ambushed by a bunch of angry pigs who do get this sneaky stabbing, which means their stats are going to be quite juiced. 61 melee attack and 37 weapon strength, great AP values. And the Reichsguard Knights are in a losing battle here for sure. And Kiali responding very quickly with the Demogriff Knights and the Caribou Greatswords, trying to get over here and salvage these uh, Reichsguard Knights who are very healthy. And the Reichsguard Knights did not finish off the Doomdiver Catapult. I have no idea how that did not happen. He had a, a free lane. Mortar Wagon up to 58 kills, shooting into uh, some of the Orc Biggins here, and getting a little bit of damage. And uh, Demogriff Knights doing a great job, but the Greatswords might be able to carry this game. The Caribou Greatswords are so good. They also give a melee attack buff to nearby troops. That's pretty insane. Hellstrom Rocket Battery Crew, run down by Goblin Wolf Riders. And Franz, unfortunately Franz is on foot, so he's not going to be as much of a game changer as he possibly could. But Falcon pulling ahead in this game. Ever so slightly. It's a very, very close scrap. But you can see the bounce power is a little bit favored for the Greenskins, as those Reichsguard Knights being taken out, or at least punished that badly, is, uh, is very, very strong. We still have some Demis with Lances going after the Pigs, but the Empire backline is pretty much gone. So all the artillery pieces, the cannon, the Hellstrom rocket battery, only, only the Mortar Wagon, the hard carry here is still alive. I have no idea how that's possible. But the Nordland Mariners are finally broken. The Caribou Greatswords are on their last legs. Not too many models left. Yeah, 501. Ron's going in there. Might be able to finish off these Night Goblins with a couple Brave Greatswords, but yeah, the Goblins are just all over the place. Just absolute madness. Mortar Wagon charging into melee. Going to be trying to break the leadership here of the Savage Orcs. Bounce of Power getting more and more Greenskin favored. Granted, if you look around the battlefield, a lot of Greenskins are running. And remember, the Greenskin leadership is not very strong. It's a Goblin Great Shaman. So if it does come down to like a hero fight, Franz is going to be much better. And I think what needs to happen now, if the Empire can somehow keep a couple of Caribou Greatswords alive and get them with the Blob and get that AoE leadership buff they have, that would be really strong. Itchy Nuisance popped here on this fight. The uh, War Wagon Chariots 
Where are they going? It looks like they're going to be trying to ram these uh, these Goblin Wolf Riders. Keep them at bay. Greatsword's up to 111 kills. You know, the Empire might be able to scrap this back. They're doing a really good job with their Cav. Yale is definitely quite the tenacious fighter here. We also have the Eldred Guard, the uh, the Balthazar Gelt Spearmen here with their 70 armor holding back these goblins. And yeah, Hjali might be able to hold this. Franz is still around, but Franz gets blasted by a Vindictive Glare. Him and his three Caribou Greatswords, that's pretty damn epic for sure. Black Orcs, this is really, really, really good for Felcon. The Black Orcs here, here, and they're pounding this Empire Captain. Hjali needs to get this guy out of here ASAP if he wants a chance in this game. And it looks like the uh, Empire Captain is going to be coming out, escaping the Black Orcs, but is it too late? Now, the Empire Cav looks like they have finished off the Goblin Wolf Riders. The Mortar Wagon is back online, and, you know, maybe the Mortar Wagon is the carry here. How are these Goblin Archers not dispatched of yet? Great Swords are broken. Empire Captain is broken. Franz and his his boys, or his boy here, I don't know how many are left. It looks like two, yeah, so it's still boys. Yeah, that Doom Driver Catapult not going down earlier. I wish I could have seen why it didn't go down. Maybe Falcon had something back there to protect it, but that is going to be game, and Falcon wins this series 2-1. That was a really close, scrappy game. That one went like nine minutes almost. That was insane. And the Caribou Greatswords are, of course, unbreakable. And that's why the battle didn't end. So now we have Xyphos versus Felcon in a best of five. GG. That was amazing. That was a really good game. So Felcon will advance. So let's go ahead and go back to the bracket here. Flash trading bracket. And Felcon will advance to face Xyphos in the grand finals of today's tournament. That was, uh, that was something, wasn't it? Oh my god. Yes. Franz couldn't carry. Not if he gets army losses, yeah. That was a game, wasn't it, guys? I'm sorry, I was so focused on the game, I didn't, I wasn't, you know, seeing as much chat there, but... Yeah, so in the future, in these autogen tournaments, I may allow people to, like, like, pick items on characters and things like that, but I don't know, for now, I think just having it ultimate, like, just super haggard is, is good. Where'd Felcon go? No, Falcon, come back. <laughs> Let me go tag him. Hold on. All right, one sec, guys. All right, so Falcon and Xyphos will be joining for the finals. And uh, we'll be good to go. That was a good game. It was the Black Orcs who saved the catapult, says Mikkel. Oh. I know. What's really funny is the campaign units. I did not even think of that before today. I was just like, oh, shit, they can get campaign units? Smithologist, you should, man. The Caribou Greatswords are really good. Unbreakable with like an aura that like gives melee attack. Like, come on, that's so good. <laughs> Falcon's like, lol. All right, so um, we'll go ahead and put them on the warps. We'll put them on the warpstone mine. Screw it. So Falcon just sitting on his beast bin. Uh, all right. This is a really fun format for sure. Yeah, I'll think I'll think of some changes. And again, if you guys have any feedback, um, it, the best way to get it to me is to leave it as a comment in the video after the fact. So Falcon is on this side now. So let's update the nameplates. Now you guys are going to get a lot more autogen. This is best of five, and this is going to be Zyphos. I really do want to see a Beastman autogen, but I want to see a Norsk autogen get like one of those like Norsk and legendary lords. There we go. Okay, well, it's not quite centered. It bothers me, but it's okay. Hey, so Falcon starts with picks and bans. So we're going to see what they pick. Single ban. Best of five. It's time. So we are on the uh, the map here, the Warpstone Mine. Players are going to do their picks and bans, and now we're back in business. I'll just hang out with you guys for a quick minute. Yeah, if you autogen with High Elves, you can get the Gate Guard, and you can also get the uh, Alistair the White Lion, correct? So it looks like Felcon is thinking about what faction he wants to play. At the moment, he's uh, exploring his options. So Falcon's going to go Tomb Kings. And he gets to ban one if he wants to. I don't know. Or they can just gents, honestly, if they're okay with it. Like, it's, it's totally up to them. It's a clan war. He's banning dwarves. Okay. So now Felcon can go ahead and autogen. So we'll see what he gets for his army. I'm currently watching. Because it doesn't matter, like, what your opponent picks. Oh, okay. 
So Felcom gets caught up, a Lich Priest of Light, a Tomb Guard front line with Usirian's Legion. And he also gets a Screaming Skull Catapult and a Tomb Scorpion. So now Xyphos can pick, because it doesn't matter like when they pick their army since it's completely random. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Oh, Felcom got Usirian's Legion of the, ne of the Netherworld. Oh, that's the campaign unit. Oh my God. Yeah, Tomb Kings have some campaign stuff as well. It, you know, it's fun because it almost feels like we're getting new content like with this, right? Like it feels like we're seeing DLC like, oh, a new unit for this faction, right? Oh man, that's really fun. You know, the campaign specific stuff would be really cool to add to multiplayer. Like, But the problem is not every faction has it, so it'd be really unfair. Falcon, that's a, dude, that's not a bad army, bro. Come on, don't give me that shit. That's a good army. Not that bad. So Xyphos is going Dark Elves. Okay. I am watching. All right. So Xyphos is going to auto-gen here with his Dark Elves. Oh, he's going High Elves, I guess? Okay. It's fine. It doesn't matter who he picks. It's anyone except for except for Dwarves. Yeah, Dwarves would be brutal for Tim Kings, I think, in auto-gen format. He's, he's, he's trying to decide on his factions here. <clears throat> but nonetheless, we're watching, so we're going to see it. Oh, no. Poor Felcon. Oh, my God. This is like a ladder army. So, look at this, guys. Xyphos got Malekith. Got a Master. He got Shades. Got a freaking Scourge Runner Chariot. Coldland Dread Knights and pretty good infantry. Ah, Felcon, dude. You might be in some trouble, man. You might be in some serious trouble. Freaking Malekith and a Master and, like, Shades. Scourge Runner. Oh, man, if Felcon can win this, that's going to be super impressive. You know, honestly, though, I mean, the front line is pretty terrible. And, and Felcon does have uh, a, a catapult to force them in and also has a ton of halberds. So there is a chance for Felcon here. But Malekith plus, like, Scourge Hunter plus Shades, that's pretty brutal. If anyone can win it, it's certainly him. So now we're jumping in, my friends. This is the Grand Finals. And uh, let me go ahead and minimize real quick. <laughs> oh, man. That was, that was pretty brutal, guys. I think Falcon has a chance. It's going to be hard. It, it largely depends on what uh, Mal, like Malekith... <sighs> I wonder what mount he's on. I think for that cost, he's not on his dragon. So he's probably on a Velociraptor with all his spells. You know, the Velociraptor Malekith isn't going to be too bad, but Soul Sealer is still there. And he has a Master too for anti-large against Constructs. That's like really nice. And Shades to pound Constructs. But to, uh, Falcon's army is kind of wide. It's like, it's mostly Halberds and like different things like that. So, I mean, it's not like there's too many choice targets, I guess. And he does have the Usirian's Legion of the Netherworld. Don't forget that. Falcon's like, rip me. All right. So if we take a look, let's go ahead and take a look at this campaign unit. So this is a campaign unit for the uh, Tomb Kings. Physical resist, and it causes fear, I believe. Don't they cause terror? No, just fear, I guess. But yeah, pretty good. I mean, they're kind of like Kepra Guard. Good melee attack, good weapon strength. Uh, Falcon has some harass elements. Actually, you know what? The Skeleton Archer Chariots might be big, uh, pretty good in the Nehekar Horseman as well. He does also have a Lich Priest of Light, so he can net things down. And, uh, yeah, Xyphos definitely got the better army, though. But uh, if anyone can win this, it's certainly Felcon. <laughs> He's like, oh, man, look at Xyphos' army. He's got, like, Malekith and a Master. He's got Shades, like, a ton of Cavs, Scourge Runners. <laughs> this is, like, a ladder army. It's like, this is, like, this is probably what Xyphos would pick normally if you were playing two kings. <laughs> I mean, obviously not just like this. He probably wouldn't bring the dual weapons, but... Yeah, I don't know. We'll see what Felcon can do. This is going to be a tough one. This is going to be a scrap for sure. But remember, it is best of five, guys. We are in the grand finals of today's glorious tournament. If you're enjoying this format, please do drop a like. It helps me out quite a bit. And more so, it helps me gauge what content you guys enjoy. Because that's when I go back and look at the streams and see how they do in that department, obviously. And that's how I decide what to do more often. So if you guys are enjoying this format, let me know by uh, liking the video. Dark Shard's here. Not shielded. What can Kotep do? Now, Kotep does have the Sandstorm. Falcon also has a terrain advantage here a little bit. He can kind of defend here. <laughs> He's saying do it. He is ready indeed. On the far side here, we have Zypho setting up shop. Just moving his Dark Shards all over the map with very rapid micro. 
And the Master, I think, was on a horse, too. It's pretty convenient. Uh, that'll be, like, a really good answer against the Tomb Scorpion. But the Usirian's Legion of the Netherworld, the X-Factor here in this battle, certainly going to be very good against the uh, front line of the uh, Dark Elves. <clears throat> good luck. I don't know. This is going to be a tough one. I think, yeah, Xyphos' army is way better. But not not a lost cause. Not a lost cause. Still semi-doable. Ground hero from Kotsap. Oh, is he on a chariot? Oh, Kotsap's actually on a chariot. Okay, so at least he got a decent mount. So you can like ride through and, you know, punch the shades and things like that, potentially in the late game. And Felcon does have the catapult, so at least he can take that defensive posture and not have to advance out towards Xyphos, but the Scourge Runners are going to be a pain in the butt to deal with. I guess Nehekar Horsemen are a decent answer against them if they can isolate them, but, you know, Xyphos does have Dark Riders, plus he does also have Cold One Dread Knights. Yeah, so those Horsemen certainly are going to be outmatched. So the Catapult shooting downtown, going after the, uh, the Harganath Executioners, which is a great choice. And missing every single shot. <laughs> Actually, no, one of them did hit. Took out, uh, took out two models right there. But this is really good for Falcon, this choke, because there's a, a choke here and a choke here. So it's going to force the Druchi to go super up and around here, which means Falcon can use his halberds very effectively to screen. Because Falcon's front line is much better. I mean, the only good front line cho uh, choice here for Xyphos really is the Harganath Executioners. And yeah, the Dark Charge are now being targeted here. Felcon is not yet aware of the Shades, because again, they do have the Sock feature. So until they get closer, they're not going to be visible, or they are scouted. Catapult's still going in hard. Pounding the Dark Shards, but not doing too much damage. Horribly inaccurate. But uh, we'll see what, what can happen here. Now, Felcon does have a Lich Priest of Light, which means he does have Nets. The Shades are now engaged as well. So the Shades are visible. You can see both Shades are shooting in, going after the Usirian's Legion of the Underworld, but remember, those guys are ghostly spooky, so they have 75% physical resist. Granted, Malakith can probably soul steal them, which I think is what he's going to do. And Felcon is now advancing out on the Shades, it looks like, using his Lich Priest, as well as the Grand Hero from Kotep to try and ride those guys down, which is good. Now, he's not defending the Catapult at all, which is interesting. Um, I thought he might leave, like, one Halberd back there, but I guess he just, like, is, just cares so little about the unit. But this is actually really good for Felcon, because the Shades are unprotected here, and he's able to blitz through the front line, whereas all the uh, forces for the... Uh, Dark Elves are kind of out of position, to be honest, and the Shades are going to get got for free, it looks like. It looks like Xypho's not going to be going after the Screaming Skull Catapult in the back. Halberds are holding relatively well against Harganeth Executioners, and one group of Shades is just out of the picture. Okay, that's a really, really clutch play by Felcon. The Dark Shards are also taken out by the Skeleton Archer Chariots, and the Coldwind Dread Knights are trying to respond. And they're certainly going to be doing some damage, but Felcon has already finished off a Shade here, which is very clutch, and now these Dark Riders are probably going to be losing pretty bad. Verona's Time Warp activated... And the Dark Riders are going down very quickly. However, if we look, you can see the uh, Tomb Scorpion is getting absolutely shrecked. I don't know if Felcon's going to be able to save it. Malekith and the Master both have really good AP. The Master does also have anti-large, but the Harganath Executioners are going as well. And honestly, this is a super close game. Like, I think either player could win this. There's still a ton of Halberds. The Catapult is still going and still memeing, and it was actually able to break the Harganath Executioners, but the Tomb Scorpion has fallen. Granted, the Tomb Scorpion isn't a terribly expensive piece, but Felcon with the classic Barona's Time Warp play, Grand Hero and Kotep Chariot, OP apparently. And now we have the Coldland Dread Knights engaged in combat against Nehekar Warriors, Nehekar Horsemen, and also some Halberds who are surging up the hill. Now, if these Cold One uh, Dread Knights rampage into Halberds, that could be a huge boon here for the Tomb Kings. Oh, look at that! What is that spell even? <laughs> it's actually from Lore of Darkness. It's Whirl of Blades, I believe. I forget what it's called. Something of Blades. But it uh, actually ends up hurting the Coldland Dread Knights more. And now Malekith and his boy... The Master are trying to goon Kotsep. Kotsep on a Chariot has 74 speed, so actually a little bit faster than Malekith if he's able to get away. And here we have a Lich Priest in the far distance chasing off the Shades with dual weapons, which I think is a smart play. So Falcon with good control should be able to get this uh, Kotsep away from Malekith. Still not going to be easy, but certainly possible. So Halberd's here grinding it out pretty well, doing some huge damage against the Cold and Dread Knights. And the Master is now stuck in combat, and uh, yeah, that's a good engagement. The Screaming Meme Catapult in the back has been shut down, but for some reason, Kotsep is not able to get away from Malekith. And uh, honestly, I think this is going to cost him the game. Like, if, if Kotsep could have gotten away somehow, I think Felcon was honestly in pretty good shape. I mean, the Usirian's Legion of the Netherworld able to take out these Shades and getting Cursed Blades. I mean, these guys are just going full raid boss here, but Malekith does actually slay Kotsep. So that is probably one big misplay that's going to cost Felcon the game. I, I don't know if I would even call it a misplay. I don't know what he could have done, really. Maybe just stay with his Halberds over here. But nonetheless, we'll see what happens. Now, Bounce of Power is Xypho's favorite at this point. The Dark Elves are pulling ahead, but it's it's really like there's not much left for either side. I mean, it's just Malekith and a couple like loose units here and there. The uh, Usirian's Legion, up to 61 kills. They were able to do some good work, but I think Felcon knows it's over at this point and is going to withdraw. Honestly, yeah, if Kotsip had lived there, the Bounce of Power probably would have been even. 
because there was still a ton of Tomb Guard with Halberds, which were essentially a counter against everything Xyphos had. And if with Katya being alive, he might have had a chance there. Very well played. Very well played. It was indeed a Valiant defeat. Yeah, I'm surprised. Katsep was faster, but I guess he just was getting that charge acceleration. All right, there you have it. And now we go on to the next game. So we will do for the next map. Let me go ahead and find one here. We will do the Agam Shard. Poor executioners. Xyphos pick and ban. Yeah, I think Falcon had a, a chance there. His play, because Xyphos took the long way around to go after his back line, and then Falcon just blitzed through the front. Oh, Vampire Coast and Wood Elves. Let's see what he bans. Yeah, we have to see what his ban is first. One. Just one ban. Usually in best of five, I just do single ban. Falcon switching through all of his different choices. I hope Falcon goes some faction with campaign exclusive, but he is down a game now, so probably safer to go with someone a little bit, you know, more steady. Uh, so we'll see. Xyphos is on the ban right now, so we'll look at Xyphos' army. He's thinking about it. He is thinking about it indeed. Falcon. Oh, Avalorn could be a good one. You have a high chance of getting a Lariel, but you won't have her items. Bretonia. So he bans Bretonia, and I think he's going to go Wood Elves. Auto, so auto Xyphos. So Xyphos is going to auto. Looks good, looks good. All right. So Xyphos got an ancient tree, man, a Waystalker. <laughs> he says, God. <laughs> two Treekin. He got two Treekin. He got Wardens of Scythril, some Wild Riders. You know, honestly, this army's not that bad, Xyphos. You have like a meaty. Not enough Daka, but certainly a tanky army. Now for Felcon, Felcon got an Orc War Boss. Just a shit ton of random units. <laughs> I don't even want to get into analysis with that. That's just too much stuff. All right, let's start this battle. Oh my god. This is a circus. Oh man. Felcon with his big haggard Orc stack. I don't know. Xyphos' army is actually pretty good against an Orc Rush, though, because it has a... Uh, it has like tree can and ancient tree man, of course, which has healing. I would imagine, um, like wardens of Sithril for the anti-large. Like it's a tanky army, and it does have terror as well. And Falcon didn't get a caster; he just got an orc war boss on foot. <laughs> a truly uh, a campaign army here, but he got two artillery as well. You guys like that army? Falcon got such a big horde. Oh my god! Yeah, well that's what happens when you play uh, when you auto gen those guys. You just get like a doom stack. The Queen's Green Skin Army looks normal. It's just such a, a mess. Which is fun because it actually reflects Green Skin flavor very much. It's just so random and just all over the place. But you know what's really going to be super good for Felcon is the fact that he has uh, Doomed Ivory Catapult and also uh, Rock Lobber. So, you know, Xyphos is going to be forced out. Xyphos might camp in the forest, but I don't think his deployment zone can reach the forest. That would probably be his best bet, to be honest. Like if Xyphos camped in the trees. But uh, I don't think there's any trees for him to camp on this map. He's going to be like kind of out in the open more or less. Thank you guys for joining today. It's been a very fun day. Clearly you guys enjoy this format, so we'll uh, do it more often. we got to mix it into the repertoire. Currently Xyphos up 1-0 here. Yeah, there's nowhere to hide on this map. <laughs> you are in the open. So yeah, we saw Xyphos' army. He's got, uh, he's got some tree kin. Double tree can, he's got an ancient tree man, who of course has lore of life, which is very strong. Wild riders are really good against greenskins as well. And he does also have a way stalker for sniping characters. It's honestly a pretty decent wood elf army. I think the army, but I don't know, Felcon has a ton of stuff too. Felcon's got a bunch of <laughs> Night Goblin Archer fanatics. Oh my God. He's got two artillery pieces. He's got some AP, you know, he's got some black orcs. He's got some squig herds, some uh, orc boy biggins with anti-large and AP. So he's not helpless against armor. The orc war boss is uh, on foot with a decent armor piercing as well and some savage orcs. The Greenskin army could win this. I think it's pretty good. It, my only concern for Falcon is that I think Xyphos is a Wood Elf main, more or less, and I don't know how much Falcon plays Greenskins. That would be the one thing I would be a little bit worried about for him. But, you know, if anybody can make it work, certainly him. A good scrap so far, lads. I was really hoping to see a Vampire Coast. 
Like Vampire Coast would have probably gotten so much haggard artillery, but I feel like with Vampire Coast you would just there's three variants of the gunnery mobs, so there's chances you would get like a ton of hand cannons and those really terrible ones. And you would just be in huge trouble. It was pretty fun seeing the Empire Autogen today. That was that was certainly a highlight. Both players setting up their armies. Falcon has the artillery, so what that means is Xyphos is gonna have to come skirmish. He'll probably just use his Glade Riders to count as attacking. And then also have his uh, Waystalker. We will see. We will see indeed. Good luck, have fun. And the tree can are, are bracing for a rush. So you can see Xyphos, based on how he's setting up, is kind of expecting like some sort of a mass vanguard. Yeah, he's got tree can on both flanks. He's got spears in the front. His one missile unit, which it's really funny because Xyphos loves playing missile factions, like using missiles. And he got only one. <laughs> he got like, actually, he got three technically, but only one infantry missile piece. Wild Riders are going to be super clutch, though. Those, those guys are quite good against this Greenskin army. So now the Greenskins are uh, preparing to assault the position. Oh, man. He, got, he even got Arrow of Kernis against Artillery. That's pretty gross. So the Doomdiver Catapults are shooting. Going to be going after the Glade Riders with the Hagman Tips. Falcon, of course, needs to advance here. And it seems like the Hammer of Gork plus the uh, Doomdiver Catapult able to take out some... Serious modelage here from these units, losing seven so far, which is a, a very, very good start for the Greenskins, but losing an artillery piece certainly sucks. But the uh, cooldown on the Waystalker is quite long. So Felcon not advancing, actually. I really actually thought he would advance on this force, but he's probably currently, you know, assessing the army, thinking about what he should do, and trying to get rid of Xyphos' uh, mobile elements here. Doom Diver Catapult takes out more of the Glade Riders. Pretty beat up now, for sure. Felcon advancing once again. It looks like he has taken kind of gauge of his opponent's army and now knows that he needs to advance. Well, the archers will be pretty good. The little goblin archers. And honestly, this Waystalker is a little bit far forward with no support. If Felcon just rushed with all his like Orc War Boys and, you know, some squigs and yeah, the Orc War Boss, unfortunately, is on foot. So he's he's not going to be getting here super quick. Xyphos hides in the trees with the Glade Riders. And now I would imagine the Doom Divers are going to start going after Wild Riders, which is the next best target. Yeah, and you can see they're trying to. They're, they're heat-seeking missiles. Quite thirsty. Xyphos' only missiles, though, are these uh, Glade Guard here with Hagman Tips, at least in his main army. And the Waystalker, still shooting away, but the uh, Orc Artillery is pretty good. And now with the uh, push forward here from Felcon, you might actually be out of range. So the Wild Riders, harassing once again, but Felcon's fanatic archers ready to throw their haggard goblins at whatever approaches. Doom Diver Catapult still peppering in, and honestly, Felcon's getting some really good harass damage, but so is Xyphos. Cypho's getting a little bit of poke and stroke here, but the Goblin Horde's coming, and man, Falcon has so many cab units. Like, it's it's a lot. <laughs> Look at the Ancient Tree Man's coming! The Ancient Tree Man is coming for the Orc War Boss! There are some Black Orcs nearby. The Orc War Boss knows he does not want any of that business. That The Ancient Tree Man will stomp the yard with him. And yeah, he's pulling back now. Little Goblins are shanking at his heels. And what is Falcon going to be targeting with the Night Goblin Fanatics is my question. Waystalker stuck in combat here with Orc Boys, which is never good for him. And we have Treekin fighting against Orc Boys as well. So certainly a wet noodle contest. Treekin hit very, very softly. Oh no, but Felcon gets a bit of a jump here. He gets some uh, Wolf Riders, some uh, Dirk at Squig Hoppers. And now he gets some Orc Boy Biggins back here, charging into the Wild Riders with the Wah active. Earthblood does go down, which is going to be a nice boon. There's also some Spears coming in, the Wardens of Sithril. So uh, Felcon can't stay here for too long. If he stays for too long and the Wardens of Sithril get ingrained in combat, that could be pretty bad. Now back in the main lines, we do have the Ancient Tree Man pushing in onto the uh, Night Goblin Archers, and there's nothing really here to stop him. There are some Wolf Rider Archers who look to be charging in, but a bit of a scary situation. Orc Boys engaging against Eternal Guard. Black Orcs, or Savage Orcs, moving in as well. Should be able to crump these Wildwood Rangers with the Wah active. And yeah, it's a pretty even scrap so far. Wild Riders ch charging headlong into Black Orcs. Not going to be great for them. A lot of armor on those Black Orcs. And the Orc War Boss is leading the Glorious Wah. And Falcon now charging back in with his flank force. It was temporarily kind of fended off by the uh, Wardens of Sithril there, but... He's going to be able to push it in now. So now all the Goblin Archers are, are back and they've kind of fanned out. And shooting the Ancient Tree Man here certainly isn't a terrible idea. He doesn't have, you know, uh, the freaking Rusty Errors or anything to really sunder the armor. But nonetheless, that Tree Man does need to go. In the front line, Black Orcs still grinding it out. The Shield of Thorns and Earthblood overcasted in this main position. But the Black Orcs are holding very, very firm. And the Greenskin Cav doing a okay job. But being forced back by the Glade Riders and the Hagman Tips. Maybe just peeling over here and surrounding the Ancient Tree Man with some pigs. I mean, Orc Warboy Biggins do have anti-large, but it looks like Felcon, you can see the attack orders being given. He wants to get through this pocket here. And the uh, Wardens of Sithril and the Eternal Guard holding up surprisingly well. Savage Orcs are making some decent chips on that Waystalker there, but Felcon opting to not engage the Tree Man with the pigs. I guess figuring it might take too long, but yeah, he's just trying to get onto the archers. And uh, Xyphos mirroring him very well. Wild Riders are just kind of watching their movements. 
Those damn tree kins too are also serving as a pretty good roadblock. You can see the green skin force over here really being collapsed heavily. But the pigs charge into the archers, get a nice charge, but now they're going to be countercharged by the wild riders. And I don't know if Felcon has the follow up to really punish this play. A really good earthblood and counterplay from Xyphos with the wild riders just mirroring those movements. Black orcs will eventually beat these eternal guard, but I don't know. This is a scrappy battle. Something else you have to remember is that Falcon or er, uh, still does have his Doomdiver catapult and some troops back here and some goblins, so he does have some reserves he can pull in. And the very expensive Wildwood Rangers are getting very, very heavily damaged, and Black Orc's still holding well. But the pigs in the back certainly paying the troll toll. So Falcon has Dirk at Squid Coppers back here. Xyphos sitting quite comfortably. His Wild Rider play is immaculate here. He's doing such a good job keeping out like all these hordes of just haggard archers. Doomdiver Catapult still shooting, I think, at the Ancient Tree Man, unless that was a mistake and it just hit them there. But the Black Orcs are immune to psychology, which is really nice for the Greenskin, so it's going to take a while to break them. But I think this Orc War Boss might be in a little bit of trouble if he's not careful. Granted, the Ancient Tree Man isn't a world beater, but he still has good AP, and uh, the Orc War Boss isn't like super tanky. It's a really close fight, guys. Balance of power is uh, very, very even. The Archers shooting in, going after the very squishy Wood Elf forces. The Morgum's Mage Marauders can certainly be used as a harass unit on the Archers. And Felcon realizes this and grabs the Morgrim's Maging Marauders and beeline straight for the Hagbane Tips, which is going to be a nice pick. In the meantime, though, the Orc War Boss and the Black Orcs putting up a good fight here against the Ancient Tree Man. He's actually taking a ton of damage, and the Squid Coppers from the other side of the battlefield do collapse. And the Glade Guard are, uh... Yeah, they're probably going to go down here. There's a lot of Greenskins on top of them, and there's no support nearby. The Wild Riders are over here, and that's the thing. The Greenskin army is so wide, and depending on how this battle goes, I think getting the, uh, the Goblin Fanatic Archers and shooting the Ancient Tree Man here would actually be the best play. Uh, I think you could potentially finish him off. And yeah, the Doom Diver Catapult is actually going after the Ancient Tree Man, but he does get the Terror Route on the Orc War Boss. And there's also a Waystalker coming in, which is uh, no joke. So currently, balance is very even. This is a, a very, very close fight. But Felcon opting to use his Night Goblin Archers to take out the Treekin, which I suppose isn't bad. If you can take them and chase them off the battlefield with Wolf Riders, that's a super clutch play. And those Black Orcs, man, those guys are MVPs. Ancient Tree Man's getting very low from the Doom Diver Catapult barrages. Felcon charging in with the Mangy Marauders in the back against the very beat up Wildwood Rangers. And Another Waz active, that's actually huge. These Black Orcs are suddenly up to 57 melee attacks, solid stuff. And the Orc War Boss is back in business. He's like, get back here, boys. He's getting in there. He's fighting Doom Diver Catapults, crumping into the Ancient Tree Man. And could this be a comeback for the Greenskins? I certainly felt as if they were on the ropes, but now there's goblins coming up from reserve. And, you know, never would I think that the goblins would be like the Rohirrim, rescuing Helm's Deep, but in this case, they are. And they're going to be uh, probably taking out those Wardens of Sithril. And this fight here is won, more or less, by the Greenskins. What? And Felcon pulls ahead on the Bounce of Power with his haggard Greenskin Legion. The Orc War Boss here with 400 weapon strength. These Black Orcs have just been MVPs. They're actually going to be able to chop down the Treekin pretty effectively. Over here, you can see Felcon's mobile forces, the uh, Morgum's Maging Marauders, the Wolf Riders. They're just chasing down Treekin here. We have Orc Boys pushing in as well. And the Goblins coming in from reserve and the, the artillery shooting all game. Like, look, they still have a lot of ammo. That's enough ammo to do some huge damage. This game is just ludicrous. So now the Orc War Boss is falling back, which I think is a smart play if it can escape. That's uh, certainly nice for the Greenskin leadership. And what do the Woodies have left? Not much. The Fnatic Archers still have some ammo to really pepper down some of these characters. And the Goblins, I think, have enough numbers to actually win these fights. Like, as long as the Ancient Tree Man kind of gets brought low, I think the Fnatic Archers might be able to win it. The balance is kind of creeping back a little bit, guys. I think maybe the fact that the Black Orcs are broken, and I really think not shooting the Tree Man when he was surrounded was a big mistake, but I don't know. This is a, a close scrap. So the Doom Diver Catapult only has one piece left. That's probably why the DPS is so slow and low. Felcon falling back now, trying to get his bearings here. And he has a lot of loose cab all over the map. So he's got some pigs here. He's got some Dirk at Squake Hoppers. Uh, if the Squake Hoppers could actually isolate the Waystalkers, that would be a really clutch play. With their bonus for his infantry and their poison, they might be able to win that. But it looks like, uh, yeah, are they going to break? They are fanatics, so they're not slouches in melee combat as far as goblins go. Kind of a weird hybrid unit. And it looks like maybe a heal going down. No, Foe Seeker. Here, the Glade Riders with the Hagman Tips are broken. Balance of Power goes back towards the Greenskins. There's a bunch of Greenskins rally all over the map here. And, you know, the Hammer of Gork or the Goblin Rock Clobber, I wonder what it's shooting. I would imagine the Ancient Tree Man here. And the Doom Diver Catapult is really clutch because if the Greenskins just fall back to their artillery, it's going to take forever for the very slow Wood Elf army to get there. And uh, the Waystalker is almost out of ammo, too. Oh my god, these players must just be, like, <laughs> sweating bullets here. So the Dirk and Squid Coppers coming back is quite solid. Oh, and the Fanatic Archers! Here they come with their 16 melee attack. They do have poison as well. And you can see the Greenskins just, just blitzing in, trying to break the leadership with a rear charge on the Treekin here. The Black Orcs are making their way back in. The Tree Man is wavering as well with the rear charge. And the Haggard Fanatic Archers! 
They're going in with their shanks. Look at them. True heroes of the Greenskin Empire. And the Treekin are broken. Oh, that is huge. That's 10 Treekin right there. And now I think the Doom Diver Catapult could probably defeat the Tree Man here. Just by kind of popping him. How much HP does he have? 1,600. Xyphos must be out of Winds of Magic now. And Goblin Archers are shooting him, which is something. I mean, yeah, the Goblins are breaking and running and getting terrified. But there are Black Orcs in here as well. And the Pigs and Squigs are coming, baby. It's back on the menu. They're going to be charging in. And the Squigs certainly get some good damage there. And I think we got a terror out from the uh, from the pigs. So the squigs certainly the more valiant of the folk. Oh my god, this was such a good game. Oh man! And Felcon wins it! I can't believe that! I can't believe that. That was incredible. I really didn't think he would have the steam there at the end. So we got a 1-1 series on our hand, guys. That was insane. Very evenly matched these two players with a glorious micro on both sides. We have a donation coming in during the game from Nate McBrady of 999. Great casting as usual. How does one buy into attorney? Uh, you just have to message me, dude. You don't have to buy in. Just message me. Let me know you want to be attorneys and we'll make it happen, dude. Uh, so yeah, and do that in the Discord. Man, what a game, guys. GG. Yeah. Xyphos did a really good job. Like... It's fending off the hordes for as long as he did. Green skin seemed good in autogen. It just went off trash. <laughs> They're just discussing the game here. All right, so for the next map, go ahead and do the... Uh... Let's go do Altar of Outskirts. All right, so here they go. So map is set. Now Felcon is on the pick and ban. Zypho says he wanted mass archers, but had he gotten mass archers, outdoor skirts. The map is set. Maybe you can't see it for some reason. So Felcon's going to pick here. This is his greenskin army from before. Yeah, greenskins and autogen don't seem that bad, actually, because you just get a ton of stuff. And like, it kind of is how greenskins play anyways. <laughs> I wonder what he's going to pick. Is he going to go Norska and try and get like the Maze Keeper or like the the Hell, Can the Hell Cannon battery? He's going Bretonia, I think. Oh my god. No, he's he, he's not autogenic. He's just actually switching and trying to decide who he wants to play right now. Because it's not until he declares it. Just let me know your declaration before autogen. Yeah, because you see if you look at Norska... They have the Ice Forge Legion. They have the Great Maherd of the the, the Blood Fjord, Kihar the Tormentor, and they also have Azric the Maze Keeper. So you can get all of those. It's it's truly a gamble. He's going Norska, and then he's banning Skaven. Okay. Go ahead. So he's going to auto gen here. All right, so we're going to see what he goes. So he just banned Skaven. Oh my god, this army. Oh, he got Throg, a Deathcaster, a fr decent front line, a Giant, and a War Mammoth. You know what? That's not terrible. All right. <laughs> he, he really wanted those campaign units. I bet you he did. All right, perfect. It's like it's like gambling. Oh man. So I saw Felcon's army. He's got Throg. He's got a you know, Throg and a Deathcaster isn't a bad start. You could have gotten a Marauder Chieftain on foot, alright? Yeah, he got the Brutes of the Hound. He got a giant, he got a war mammoth, and a bunch of random chevrons all over the place. Now Xyphos is trying to decide what he wants to play here. He has no idea. It's a very tense moment here. Thank you guys all for sticking around today. It's been a fun stream. Unlimited power. He's thinking about it. The champion of France. So he hasn't picked yet. Empire. Go ahead. All right, I'm watching now. Go ahead. 
Oh my god! He goes Empire, so he gets a General of the Empire, an Empire Captain, two Great Swords, Swords of Ulrich, Nordland Mariners. <laughs> he says, all right, I'm dead, GG. Double Hellstorm Rocket Battery. Dude, this army's not bad. You have like a good front line, you have good cav, you have some artillery. I don't know what he's complaining about. That army is not that bad. Come on, man. You haven't seen Falcon's army yet. That's the thing, everybody thinks they're dead and then they see the other guy's army and they're like, oh, oh, it can get worse, <laughs> you know? Oh man, he did get some campaign. He got the uh, swords event, I forget what they're called. Yeah. It's time. Double Hellstrom rocket battery. And it is time. Hey, I'm glad you guys are enjoying the autogen. <clears throat> The double, the double Hellstrom rocket battery meme is alive. I'm going to minimize for a second. You know, the Hellstrom's won't be bad against Falcon's elite infantry, though. Sorry, guys. Just got to check something in one sec. So I'm minimized. Whenever I minimize, the, uh, the, the screen freezes for a second. So just bear with me on that, guys. All right. We're all set. And if you guys are enjoying the stream, please do drop a like. If you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe up, man. Join the crew. We're going to be doing all kinds of events. Um... And yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll start doing some giveaways on stream for like DLCs because the Warhammer DLCs are pretty cheap. I think we could do that. So I think we'll start doing that on future streams. All right. <laughs> Falcon says we hunted them, but then we became them. Yeah, he's given the Norskin speech. So yeah, you guys saw the Norskin army, obviously. We got a War Mammoth. We got Throg. The Shaman Sorcerer of Death's pretty good, though. You know, the Buna is going to be useful here, as is the Spirit Leech. We got a Giant. But the Hellstorms are honestly going to wreck this front line. Like, just go after the Brutes of the Hound and, like, the Marauder Champions and Prosper. Two Demis is also really nice. And one of them has Halberd, so at least he has something to fight the Big Mammoths. He's got the Swords of Ulrich in the front line, which are Frenzy Swordsmen, and his other unit are the Nordland Mariners. <laughs> the Beasts are coming, he says. Oh, man, I am very excited for this, guys. The Water Drinking Sounds? Oh, man, yeah, the Water Drinking Sounds. It's a very important part of my streams. General of the Empire on his horse. Empire Captain is on foot. I'm sure he's very excited to fight against the Norskin Beasts. Good luck, good luck. Yeah, Zyphos definitely wants to deploy as far back as he can. Get the Hellstorms back here. Yeah, that, that's that's smart deployment. <laughs> Look at Falcon's jankity old army. What's his freaking model count? 316 against 619. Very small armies. Oh my god, he got like some big old monsters. He got a War Mammoth. Got a Norskin Giant. Got a freaking Feral Manscore too. Feral Manscore would be pretty good. Yeah, I mean, the monsters are quite scary. The giant is very weak here, but like, if you really look at this army, there's not too many things that are great against giants. There's no crossbows. Are there? Oh, actually, I was wrong. There are some crossbowmen. Okay, so he actually has some steady damage against the giant there. Oh, and he got Zettler's Reichsguard too. I didn't see this. Xyphos got the Reichsguard Knights. Yeah, honestly, I think Xyphos has a, a pretty good army here. The only downside being is that he doesn't have a caster. But he's got halberds. He's got crossbowmen. He's got, you know, demis. Like, there's not much to worry about. I would be happy with this army in an autogen for sure. At least it has a solid front line too, I think. I think I saw some great swords. Yeah, we got swords of Ulrich, we got two great swords, which will wreck a lot of those Norskins and swordsmen as well. Go luck, have fun. So this is game three in the finals, 1-1 one, one series in this glorious autogen tournament. Now, what is Falcon's reaction going to be? The Norskin horde doesn't have much of a choice, so it's just going to advance. The mighty Throg leading the charge. <laughs> this big haggard club. Throg will be pretty good against Demis. You know, he's got anti-large and AP. He's a bit of a meme because of how good Wolfric is, but he's uh, he, he's not a terrible lord if you really look at him. He's got Frostbite, he's got anti-large, he regenerates. I mean, come on. Let's not be picky here. Now, there is some cover for the Norskins as they advance. The Hellstorm rocket battery has opened up. Hopefully Zyphos is shooting the appropriate targets. That's the thing, when you autogen with Empire, you generally get some really haggard stuff. Like, because they have so many, like, janky artillery pieces, like mortar wagons, hell blasters, like, hell storms. So it's always a bit of a gamble with Empire, but sometimes you can get rewarded with the mighty meme tank. So the Hellstorms are shooting downtown. I would imagine going after the Roots of the Hound. Yes. Glorious Hellstorm rocket battery barrages. Ooh, nice damage right there, guys. Broader Hunters with Javelins taking a huge beating on the approach. The Giants and the Manticores, the crew is all here, guys. And uh, the Empire Captain preparing the Onslaught. This is like a 
It's kind of cool to see armies led by like non-legendary lords every now and then. Here we have the Marauder Ice Wolf Chariot waiting to strike, but Xyphos is waiting with his Thembergriff Knights with Halberts. The Mammoth's coming. Th Throg just gives no shits. He's just like, screw my army. I'm going in deep, boys. I wonder if Throg's going to push in there. Hellstorm Rocket Battery just terrorizing Falcon's lines. Oh my god, the damage is quite brutal, actually. Some of the crossbowmen are shooting in. Falcon is basically just playing like Hero Hammer here with a couple heroes and monsters. This army's so small. So Throg does throw up on the Greatswords. Is able to get three models down. Fair amount of HP damage. And now he's going to be going for an Alpha Strike on these Swordsmen here. Probably trying to bait Xyphos into a big fight. And the Demogriff Knights are going to opt to fight here, but I think that Falcon will probably still win it because of the magic. He can use, like, Fate of Buna. Oh, is that going to be a Purple Sun? Oh, baby. Purple Sun. Yes, look at that. It doesn't do a ton of damage, but it looks badass. Oh, actually, it wrecked those swords. been pretty good. And it goes into the other Demogriff Knights that are approaching. Oh, brutal. So that Purple Sun was actually ended up being really good. And I don't know if the Empire is going to be able to hold this. The Empire Captain's pushing in. The Crossbowmen are shooting as well. The, the Wolf Chariot is offline, more or less. And now the Great Swords should be engaging against Berserkers here, but they do miss the charge, which is unfortunate, because Great Swords do have a charge bonus that's decent. The Giant is chasing Demis on the far side, or actually Reichsguard Knights. Now this is the fight for the fate of Middle-Earth. The Mammoth here is being worn down by the uh, Demogriff Knights, and the Empire is holding firm! The General of the Empire and the Empire Captain getting in there and hurting the Mammoth pretty bad, and Hellstorm still generating some really good results, and the Brutes of the Hounds so damn beat up from the approach. I think Xyphos is actually pulling ahead here, guys. The War Mammoth is not going so going uh, so good here. Yeah, it's being dragged down by the Demis. Look at this thing. Man, it's negative 13. It is going to get chased off the battlefield. Guys, I think Xyphos' janky Hellstorm army is going to win this. So now we have some Demogriff Knights coming from a reserve. Or actually, uh, Zintler's Reichsguard with some Halberd support who should be able to potentially rampage this match core. The, man, the Giant's coming in as well. Norska pretty much gets uh, committing all of its marbles here because it knows if it loses this fight, it may lose the game. But the Giant coming in is pretty strong. If the Mammoth can come back, that could be something as well. Uh, Falcon has magic. Xyphos does not. That is a huge boon for sure. I wonder what he's going to do next. I mean, a Fate of Buna on the Zintler's Reichsguard could be very powerful, but the Manticore in the back has been rampaged, which is really unfortunate. But the Reichsguard Knights plus the crossbow should be able to finish that thing off. Now, back in this fight, we have the Giant taking the uh, Empire General to the club. Quite literally. 2800 HP, the Giant might be able to win it, but Norska's infantry just got shrekt so hard, and now Demis are coming back in. I mean, the double Demogriff Knight is really, really strong. What does Norska have? I mean, a couple Javelins back here, but the Hellstorm Beam Battery is doing so much work, and it looks like another Purple Sun coming down. Purple Sun, won't you come and wash away the Demis? It tries, but the Demogriff Knights are able to rotate away. That is going to be a quick victory for the Empire. The Hellstorm Rocket Batteries proving to be too strong for the Norskan Infantry. And honestly, yeah, that I think the Empire Army was, was pretty decent there. I don't know what Xyphos was talking about. I mean, it had no caster, I guess. And that was the big advantage Falcon had. He had the caster. But Falcon didn't have too much to work with in the form of, like, harass. He didn't have any, like, towns or anything, really, to, like, chase those Hellstorms. And they just punished him so hard. So Xyphos with a 2-1 lead here. Could this be the end? The meme rockets did really well that time. They were they were the reason why it went so well. Yeah, you can see 123 on this one. But yeah, the great swords were better than the Norskin front line. The demis were a counter against the monsters. The only disadvantage was the magic, really. All right, so ancient dragon cave. We'll put them on a big old map. Yeah, rear ram sounds good. <laughs> Zypho says your army was such a meme. <laughs> yeah, Falcon's army was pretty terrible there. That was a really bad auto gen. So it's 2-1 in the Grand Finals here today, guys. <laughs> Unbreakable chicken for halflings. What's happening here? Oh, man. Astos Maldova, thank you so much for the five bucks, man. Uh, behold the Norskin Jank. That was a pretty terrible autogen. Oh, did I do the score wrong? Sorry. I thought Xyphos was on that side. Thanks, guys. Here we go. Perfect. Oh, yes, I was wrong. All right, so actually, yeah, Xyphos is on the pick here. So Xyphos is going Skaven. Go ahead and autogen. Falcon actually already just came in with Bretonia. <laughs> and he's banning. Let's see what he bans. 
It events Britonia. <laughs> Falcon had picked Britonia. Uh, oh man. Britonia has banned Falcon. <laughs> yeah, so Falcon gets another lease on life. Xiphos auto now. So let's see what Xiphos gets with the Skaven. All right. So, oh yeah, that's right. Skaven have campaign units. So he gets a Warlord and an Assassin. A triple Warp Lightning Cannon, a Mortar. He gets the Doombringers, Warp Fire Throwers. And honestly, this isn't a terrible Skaven army. So now Felcon needs to pick. <laughs> Zypho says campaign unit. Yes, he's all excited. Oh, man. So now we need Felcon to pick. He can't pick Bretonia, so he's got to switch. He just got so such a hard on for Bretonia here, but I don't think he Zyphos wanted to deal with like a ton of because Bretonia actually has a decent autogen against Skaven. You just get a ton of cab and can swarm them, and like the Skaven can't build around that. So Felcon is Felcon going to go Skaven too? Oh my god! Oh my god! I think he's going Skaven. Yeah, he's got his army here. So for Felcon's army, oh no, he's still exploring his options. Yeah. Just uh, declare your army before you autogen. Because the thing is, when you switch to other factions, sometimes it automatically pulls up an army. So, so he's going Beastmen. Okay. Oh, yeah. Kazrak One-Eye, baby. So we get Kazrak. We get a Bray Shaman. Uh, a mixed front line. A couple Centigors and Hounds. This is right up Felcon's alley. We get some Minos with Great Opens and a freaking Cygor. But Cygor against Triple Warp Lightning Cannon. Ah, that's going to be rough. This is a good map for Beastmen, though. All right, guys. Beastmen versus Skaven. Kazrak One-Eye coming in hot. Oh, I didn't check what kind of a caster that is, but we'll find out here in a second. Yeah. I know some people in chat were asking. Uh, it looks like he's auto... So basically what happens when you switch to a new faction sometimes, it just auto-gens an army for you. Uh, even before you click the button. But he's going Beastman. Oh, the Beast people. I, I was really excited to see a Startosa, but Beastman, uh, Beastman could be good here. <clears throat> Beastman could be quite good. We have a donation coming in from Ivar. Skaven Glory, yes, yes. Warp Stone for turn thing. Dude, give me that Warp Stone. And Steven Roberts, thank you. Hail Sigmar, Xyphos is the goat. He is, he is certainly a goat. He is very, very good at this game. Thank you, Steven. And thank you, Ivar. You guys rock. So uh, Haggard is basically, it's a shadow caster. Okay, guys, thank you. Haggard is something that in my hometown was like local slang. Like everyone growing up in my area for like that time frame of like 2000 to 2006, like Haggard was a very common descriptor and it kind of just became like something that got so ingrained in my addiction that yeah, I mean, it's just that it is what it is there. Now, this map is actually good for the Beastmen because the triple Warp Lightning Cannon is going to be really disgusting, but Zyphos, uh, or Felcon has a fair amount of Vanguard and a lot of mobile harass. So he has the opportunities to shut down the Warp Lightning Cannons, and he can also hide in the trees, which I think will be uh, an extremely clutch play. Yeah, and you can see Felcon coming with a very aggressive Vanguard here. Zyphos is going to deploy like up in the corner somewhere, though. I mean, triple Warp Lightning, come on. That is a lot of poundage. But, you know, if Felcon's army is mostly infantry, it's not going to be very good. So he does have the Doombringers, which are a campaign Warpfire Thrower. And they're, oh my god, the Doombringers are unbreakable. Unbreakable Warpfire Throwers, GG. Felcon has no chance. Look at those things. Honestly, though, Felcon's army is not terrible. Like, Felcon has a, a caster. He has a Lord. That's uh, not terrible against Gaven. I don't know. What mount is he on, actually? Okay, Kazrak's on his chariot. So he's got to be really careful for those Warpfire Throwers. Otherwise, that is going to be an absolute disaster. Thank you guys so much for your generous donations. Man, we got 1,500 people watching this. This is, uh, you guys are loving this jank, huh? Yeah. So the Skaven ROR Warpfire Throwers are unbreakable. And uh, Zyphos has got the triple Warp Lightning Cannon position. Uh, his front line's pretty weak, though. I mean, I guess he does have some Death Runners. He's got Vixtrin's Death Squad. He has some Storm Vermin with Halberds back here. He's got Ixious Triads. I mean, what is his Lord? The advantage Felcon has is he has magic. Zyphos has none. 
got a Warlord on a Bonebreaker, which is pretty jankity. But yeah, the triple warp lightnings are really nasty. Falcon just needs to really make sure he uses his uh, terrain because if if you know Kazrak even gets blasted for one second by warp lightning, like it could just be over. J Monster says we also use Haggard in Canada when you were a kid. Hmm. Uh, GSL, this is an auto generated tournament. Yeah, the the unbreakable flamethrowers. He does. He also has the yeah the Doombringers. Wait, did they have thirty six models? Is that normal? I don't feel like it is. <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of damage. Oh my god. I am so excited to see the Doombringers in action. Yeah, I feel like in these autogens, picking factions with campaign-only units is so much fun. The Skaven army is pretty mean. He does have a bone breaker. <laughs> Skaven Warlord, you never see that. Certainly today we've seen a lot of firsts here on the channel. Things that uh, don't happen terribly often, but... On the lesser, a blast. And yeah, I'll be streaming pretty much every day now, guys. I might take one or two days off a week, but we're going to be streaming every day because it is my favorite thing to do on YouTube. Felcon with some clever play. You know, he's hiding. He know, he probably knows that in Skaven Autogen, there's going to be artillery, which is like almost a given. His Saigor positioning is good too because Skaven are always going to take this deployment, like always. They're going to want that big open field to really pound you with artillery. So the Saigor uh, will have some tree protection. Kazrak deployed in the corner just to be safe. Now the battle's underway. So both players know what's up. The Bray Herd with a bit of a Vanguard deployment. They gotta be careful though. The Doombringers are uh, are no joke. They are no joke, guys. Yeah, the campaign Gisales, oh my god, and Rattling Gunners, that could have been pretty foul. Beastman Autogen isn't bad. Jesse McCree, thank you so much for the fiber. There will be more Autogen, fear not, my friends. I'll uh, I'll host these at least once a week, maybe twice. I'm gonna be trying to do some more like off format tournaments. Kelgar says it's how this game's meant to be played. It's so fun. It's really fun when you have like really top tier players too because they can make this stuff work, you know? And here comes the Gore Herd! Emerging from the tree line, the Blackhorns Ravagers as well. What is going to happen here? Xyphos with a very uh, aggressive redeployment. A lot of it's going to come down to if Falcon can shut down the goodies and take out the Zap Cannon and these other troops with his mobile forces. Falcon does have a Ungor Spearman up here. Looks like some Centigors. He has two groups of Centigors, which is nice. Like... If you could catch one of these Warp Lightning Cannons with its uh, pants metaphorically down, that could be quite nice. We will see how it goes. So in the meantime, Falcon being very cautious, keeping his Bray Herd in the forest. I wonder if he's going to try and use any magic first before he engages. Like use a, like a Pit of Shades to like take out one of the artillery crews or something. The Skaven army is pretty scary. I mean, uh, but yeah, this this is good for Falcon. This is a good time to strike because the Warp Lightning Cannons are out of position right now. It's like very clunky deployment. Oh man, guys, it's time for the Doombringers! They're gonna bring some doom here, I would imagine, to the Blackhorns Ravagers. The Razor Gore herds are pushing in, the Warp Lightning Cannons are kind of in an awkward position right now, and the Razor Gores are being sent in first. This is smart. Oh man, let's see what kind of damage they do. Oh my god, look at the damage! Brutal! But the pigs do get on their target, which is very good. Kazrak's coming in, but oh my god, Kazrak's just being one-shotted by the triple Warp Lightning Cannon. Oh man, that's painful for the Beastmen. Classic Kazrak. Pit of Shades going down. And now the Beastman Onslaught is here. If Kazrak can survive this, there's Hounds, there's Centigors coming in. Felcon needs to have, like, the Micro of the Gods right now. Oh no, and he's blitzing into the Stormvermin with Halberds, and Xyphos gets the Brace too. In the front line, the Beastman are, uh, they're trying their best, but the Poison Wind Mortar is doing a ton of work as well. Kazrak is dead. <laughs> Kazrak is dead. <laughs> Classic Kazrak. Oh my god. And up on the high ground, you can see Felcon has temporarily shut down the Warp Lightning Cannons, but... For the most part, they're all intact, and the Beastman army is just being dismantled. Oh man, the Doombringers just did so much damage. It's uh, they get to choose their factions. Yeah, it's it's not random in that respect, which is fun because I, I still want them to play factions they're good at, you know. So yep, that's gonna be game. <laughs> the Skaven triple war lightning just wrecked that Beastman army. That was such a slaughter. Oh my god. There's a couple Centigors shutting down the uh, Poison Wind Mortars. I mean, I don't know. Can the Beastmen scrap this back? I mean, Kazrak maybe should have just hidden in the trees until the catapults were offline or the uh, the Warp Lightning Cannons. Classic Kazrak. Classic. It truly is. I mean, Skaven have so much stuff left, too. Okay, there's a Saigor. Where's the caster for the Beastmen? Is he dead, too? Yeah, he's running for the hills. And there's Death Runners, like, chasing down the Minotaurs, which is, you know, pretty funny. They are minus with great weapons as well. The gods do not smile on Felcon this day. Although he's kind of scrapping this game back a little bit. 
I mean, there's two Warp Lightning Cannons online. One of them is just taken out just now. Falcon has some Poison Hounds. And the Bounce Fire is kind of creeping back. Man, if he came back here, that would be pretty legendary for sure. Yeah, but there's just so much power for the Skaven. Yeah, Falcon really trying his hardest to get down the, uh, the Warp Lightning Cannons. Like, he's bull rushing the Centigors through. He's doing everything he can. He still has the Cygor back there. And the Bounce is creeping back a little bit. As the Gore Herds and the uh, Ungor kind of infantry do get on top of the uh, Warp Lightning Cannons. That's pretty, pretty clutch for sure. The Shadow Caster's coming back. Centigors are coming back. Did I call it too early? I mean, if all Warp Lightning Cannons get taken out, maybe not. Centigors here are able to break the Warp Lightning Cannon, so Falcon extremely tenacious. And maybe if he had been more careful with Kazrak, just like kind of left him in the trees until this point in the game. That's that's a lot of like foresight, though, to know that that kind of thing's going to happen to you. So here, this Warp Lightning Cannon is going down as well. There's a fat Cyborg boulder dropping on the face here of the Skaven. And uh, the Centigors are now getting back. Now, will the Shadow Caster live? It's being blasted by this it could zap zap cannon. Yeah, I think that's it for Felcon. Like if you can't stay, take that out, it's over. And that is it. How is the <laughs> I know, let them play another game. That is a 3-1 victory for Xyphos. In the grand finals, the gods definitely not smiling on Felcon's army there and giving a triple warp lightning cannon against Beastman is so brutal. Like, against Kazrak? Like, what are you going to do? Kazrak got, like, one-shotted. Oh, my God. GG. GG, lads. Falcon says not even close. GG, lads. All right. I know. We don't want it to end. I don't want it to end. But alas, I'm going to be grabbing some lunch. Xyphos is our grand winner. And, yeah, that was, uh, that was a game. So, in summary, for today's... One of the first autogen tournaments we've had in quite some time. I think we had one way back when. But Xyphos is going to be our grand champion for today. You guys want an FFA tournament? Okay, fine. FFA. So let me grab the... We'll grab the competitors if they still want to play. We'll close it out with one more. Hold on. Turin auto FFA. Cool. So let me uh, grab the players who are just here, just to give them a little bit more. Uh, so let me go ahead and tag them. Let me see. All right, very good. So we're gonna do an autogen FFA to close this out for you guys. Oh no, not that, not this bug. I minimized while I was loading and my screen went black. Hold on guys. Uh, one sec. So, I figured out how to get around this. Okay, hold on. My task manager. Very good. So yeah, guys, we'll set it up. We're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna do an FFA. So just bear with me. Currently, uh, we'll, we'll sit on the thumbnail for now. So you guys can admire the glorious smiles of these lovely characters. The Shrine of Cain. Okay, we'll do it. So Felcon, Xyphos, if you guys are still around, we'll grab you guys. We'll do an FFA of the gods. I couldn't let you guys down, although I should have said it earlier. A lot of people left thinking it was over. What can you do? So firing up my game again. It'll take about 30 seconds and we'll get this party started. Falcon's like, please, I'm too weak. Yeah, Aristodemos, I did that exact same thing. That's how you get around it. Yeah, I discovered that recently, actually. Yeah, Aristodemos just answered that question. So you Windows, you tab, and then you put, uh, you send Warhammer to your second desktop, and then you uh, are able to minimize and force quit from there and fire it back up. Yeah, those flamethrowers, the Doom, the Doom ones, I, I could have sworn they had more models than regular ones. Balthazar is going to be on the next one. I already have the thumbnail made for the next one. All right, hold one sec, guys. One and two. Okay, so let me get the boys. Xyphos is here. Let's see if we can get Felcon. Hiala is here. Now we just need to get Felcon to close us out. 
here we go. So, um, land battle. So we're going to go free for all. And you guys want, okay. Auto gen. It's auto gen. Uh, which one did you recommend? The steps of Aisha? No, we'll do, uh, yeah, let me minimize real quick. Okay, so we're back in business. Hold on, I just need to pull it up here. I haven't auto-gen my army yet, by the way. And um, now we switch back. You can just do local recording. We don't need the scorecards. Okay, so we'll do the we'll do the steps of Aisha. It seems like a fun one. And now for my auto-gen, I just want to make sure you guys can see it. I will pick, I don't know, who do you guys want to see? You want to see Coast? I want to pick someone with campaign unique units. Um, Coast Coast could be fun. Vampire counts. We'll do Coast. Actually, I'm going to do Pirates of Sartosa. Oh! <laughs> All right, that's not bad. So we got a Deathcaster. We got a Guttery White. We got an OK front line, a Colossus, a Crab, a Mortar. What more could you ask for? All right, let's go. Let's do it, boys. Let's close out this stream with a bang. We got Avalorn. We got Hyali Nale on uh, Lizards. We got Xyphos on Wood Elves. Oh, man. I'm loving this Colossus, though. The Colossus Crab combo. Oh, baby. Look at that. The 1 2 punch with the Deathcaster. Tremble and Despair. That force is not bad. I thought about doing Empire, but I wanted to do something you guys haven't seen yet today. So, yeah, we're going to do Coast. Because you guys already saw a ton of Norse and Empire today. Like, we got to give you something different. So Xyphos is uh, getting ready, it would appear. But yeah, I got, I, got, I got the Bomber RORs and the Mortar. and Yeah, I can't choose. We went Sartosa. I wanted to get some, like, Sartosan. Oh, I did get some Sartos Sartosan infantry. I actually got the uh, Free Company. Yeah, the Sartosan Militia. Xyphos, is he here? Oh, he's here. Okay, great. Perfect. And here we go. <laughs> Let's have this glorious FFA of the gods. Oh, man. Yeah, High Elves, you can get Alistar. I, I, I like Vampire Coast. It's one of my favorite factions, though. So I'm like, eh, let's do this. Um, who else would be really fun? I wanted to do Norska just to try and get the autogen of, like, you know, the Maze Keeper or some of those OP, like, campaign units. But there's only four of them. So odds are I would just get, like, a giant and, like, a mammoth, and that would be it. We have, we have autogen. I can't change, guys. This is a great FFA map. This is a really good one. I guys, I have the deck dropper bomber ROs. Uh, so basically, Sipan Mostafa. To answer your question, did I say your name right? Uh, Mo, Mostafa. Yes. When you play uh, custom battles, anything aside from ladder, you have access to campaign units. So basically, the Empire has unique units that are only from the campaign, but within custom battles, uh, Creative Assembly made it so you could actually play with them just for fun with your friends and stuff. So I thought about going Vampire Counts to try and get like Sylvanian handgunners and crossbowmen. I think that'd be really funny. Falcon's going to get his revenge. <laughs> yeah. So players are loading in right now. I'm not going to minimize the moment. Thank you all for joining today. Uh, I have an artillery kind of situation going on so i'm gonna be like i'm gonna be like trying to avoid the main fight and then using i mean chokes are really good for me too these like street chokes like this because i don't have too much infantry so at least i can use my depth guard and like mourn goals yeah we'll see <laughs> i do have the zombie jack and ror yes i have the uh the tide of skilled they're not terrible though tide of skilled is okay at least they're they're not useless um, the bombers, ROR bombers, the salt, the salt scuttlers are pretty bad. Um, I don't know how that's going to go. This could be a little bit laggy, guys, because it's FFA and there's four people connecting. But none of the players here today had lag. But sometimes when you mix four connections together, it just uh, it causes problems. We'll see, though. Hopefully, we can get through the loading here and uh, we'll be good to go here in a minute. The issue statue in the middle of this is your YouTube profile picture, says Arisadamo. So that's cool. 
All right, looks like we're loading in. We'll see how much lag there is. Hopefully not too much. FFAs are often slideshows, which is one of the reasons I don't do them live, but who cares? We're at the end of a stream. Let's just have some fun. Okay, doesn't seem too bad. Should should chill out here in a second. Very good. Yeah, looks like everybody's good, more or less. Solid. All right, so over here, I have Xyphos' Wood Elves. Ugh, archers suck for me. Over here, I have Hyali Nali's Lizards. Honestly, I'm not liking either of these sides here. I'm trying to think how I can deploy. So we'll put the Mortar right here. Colossus can be... What is she on? Is she on a crab? Oh god, she's on foot. Is she the pistol? Okay, we got the pistol variant. That's great. So we have these two like foot sniper characters with good AP. Put the uh, Tide of Skilled here. We'll get some Depth Guard hiding in the trees. Colossus will be two. Crabbo will be three. Our Militia can just kind of be hanging out for now. Salt Lord Scuttlers are going to be in four. And uh, everything else we can kind of just micro-manage, you know, as threats come. Okay, Lizards. Druchi. Yeah, I think I'm going to hammer the Lizards first. We can use the Mortar to shoot at the Dark Elves, although the range is not quite at their deployment. Yeah, and they might have, like, Vanguard on me. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, Falcon is on Avalorn, which certainly is pretty powerful. Hopefully he didn't get a Lariel. All right, I'm ready. Let's go, champs. <laughs> Let's do it. Yes, it begins. Xyphos is autogen Wood Elves, yeah. But I'd rather... Lizards I feel a little bit more comfortable against, like with all my AP and my army comp and stuff. Get Tide of Skilled here. We'll get some Depth Guard kind of lurking over here. And we'll play it by ear. Because, again, I don't know where anybody's coming from, so... <laughs> Crocomundi. Um, I'm glad I have a Deathcaster, too. That's really nice. As long as she doesn't get gooned out quickly. You know, this army could be worse, guys. It could be a lot worse. Like, I have a couple good units. The Colossus is great. And I have extra powder. Like, oh, look at all the buffs I have on the Gunnery White. Oh, yeah, I can throw oranges at people. <laughs> it's going to be great. Let's get the Colossus here. Yeah. Kelly, I actually have a better line of sight against, so I think we'll we'll start messing with him a little bit. So we'll get the characters here. Oh yeah, blast those guys. We'll go for the Blessed Saurus. We have Militia. Yeah, we have a lot of good tools against them. Salt Lord Scuttlers, let's pull back. Okay, Dark, the Wood Elves are going over there. Let's get the Militia shooting up in the sky here. If we can. And the Mortars are shooting at uh, you guys. Yeah, shoot those Blessed Saurus. Blessed be thy Saurus. We'll block the street with our dudes. Our militia are able to fend off the Pterodons. He's not going to be able to get too much business on me here. Good, we're getting some good damage on the dinos. This is solid. We can take our bombers over there too. Ah, no. Never mind. He has an Air Force. I would imagine they're just going to run away from me. The lizards. I don't think they want any of this. And the mortars. Um, yeah. So it's basically going to be Hyale and I just scrapping it out here, it looks like. Get the bombers kind of creeping in the shadows here. Yeah, he's doing a good job using the streets to avoid me. The mortars can continue blasting. I mean, I guess if we have to hit them, it's fine. Get you over here. Actually, I don't know. I don't want to overextend too much here. Yeah, pull the Colossus back. We can shoot up in the sky, see if we can pop some of these guys. Militia, pull you guys back. Okay, there's nothing too sneaky here. Hyali and I are just kind of having a little bit of a dance. I have Crabbo's in good shape as well. We have the long rifle. And we have Salamanders coming in, trying to pop my, my Scuttlers. How dare you? Looks like I was able to dodge that for the most part, I think. Yeah. Salt Lord Scuttlers, come back. Morngulls, bombers, come in. How are our characters doing? Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, so Hyali's probably just going to be lined away from me. Uh, I'm going to be kind of left in the corner, unfortunately, which is like always a bad thing. And the bombers, maybe we can pull them around the back here and, like, go get some ambushes. We need to press up. I mean, I could be the last man standing, which is certainly nice. Uh, we'll move the mortars up here, move you guys here. We need to, like, start pressing up with all of our dudes. Because Yali's just going to uh, go to the other fight, which is smart. That's 100% the best play. We got some good damage on him, though. And uh, I still have my Colossus, so the Colossus is going to be able to start ripping some shots soon. Let's go ahead and start shooting into the Wildwood Rangers here. Just saving up the wins. I could save it for the late game. Actually, you can get her running over here, see what we can do. And the Salt Lord Scuttlers, let's go ahead and see if we can creep behind this army. The mortar's coming up the alley here. We have the militia coming. Okay, everybody's kind of scurrying here. Yeah, because 
He made a good snap call, because basically my army is so good against what he has. And can we shoot down into the Deepwood Scouts here? It looks like we can. I draw a line of sight. He's watching. The Powhawks of Sentinels are watching me. Doesn't look like I'm being flanked at all. The Mortar team is just moving super slow. And we're getting some damage. Let's go ahead and get in there with the Scuttlers. Crabbo, come. Come, mighty crab beast. Do we have any Fate of Bunas or anything we want to drop here? Ooh, we could drop a Purple Sun. Potentially. Yeah, Xyphos has all his archers. He's not going to let me get in there. Still, still dropping some bows. Move you guys into that alley there. Crabbo can go here. Colossus is still getting some good shots. Is there any cat magic I want to do? I mean, there is a pretty big blob over there. I could try and purple sun that or something. Gunnery White can start... Oh, it's is that Mel Gibson? It is! We're just going to take long long rifle shots at Mel. Kali uh, leaving his forces in the back for the most part. Let's get the Colossus over here as well. So, um... Oh no, Mel's coming! Better be careful, Mel. This is not going to be a good fight for you, man. Oh, he's going to be throwing spears at me, I think. Um, I could spirit leech him. I don't know if it's worth it. Oh, he got me with a spear. Yeah, well, he's being attacked also by that character. Let's let Mel Gibson live. Shoot one of the other characters instead. Uh, drop a purple sun over there. Let's go do that. Shoot the noble. Salt, Salt Lord Scuttlers. Uh, let's go see if we can get some pre-archer kind of action back here. And what else do we want to shoot at? We'll just shoot into this blob of Phoenix Guard. Oh, yeah, we got the purple sun. <laughs> it totally missed, though. That wasn't worth it. Yeah, it's okay. We'll save our wins for late game. Get the crab over here, Mr. Krabs coming in. We'll get the scuttlers following up. Now we got to start shooting Mel. We can't mess about too much. Let's move you guys in here, and the mortar teams should be in range now. Yeah, let's shoot these archers. Oh, the crab slap on Orion. Oh yeah, let's go. I have extra powder too, so we can give that to the Colossus, which I should have been doing quite a bit sooner. Definitely very strong. Uh, Hiale, is he coming in hot? No, he's not. Okay. I have a really comfortable position here, to be honest. Yep. Typho's going to go for the snipe now, which is which is pretty scary. i got to fall back. That was foolish of me to come that far. Militia, come up the alleys. Salt Lord Scuttlers are coming. You ready to be scuttled, boys? Oh, yeah. It's it's scuttling time. Oh, look at the Salt Lord Scuttlers dropping some bombs. Okay, we got to pull back. The crab is getting a little bit crazy now. We have the artillery advantage, so there's no point in us fighting here. Come on. Come on, let's do it. Take him out. Militia, drop some shots. Mortar teams are still shooting. Colossus is still shooting quite happily. Crabbo needs to run. Man, Xyphos is so ahead on points. Falcon's still scrapping back here with his Air Force, so he's not out of this yet. Yeah, Salt Lord's colors are just so freaking trash. Oh, God. Let's fall back to our comfortable alley. Fall back to the keep. Got to shoot at this tree man here if we can. Get some uh, Morngulls coming up, some zombies if we can. Pull back the Militia. And the Crab can now tank. I'm okay with that. With our two characters kind of going after the Tree Man here. Just drop some Salt Lord Scuttler action on the Winter Heart Guard. I'm keeping most of my good troops in the back. Just trying to be really cautious. And, oh no, the Salamanders are here! Oh no, Salamander action. Yeah, just keep dropping it here. Very good. Keep our characters shooting the big tree up there. Militia are back in business. Can they drop, draw any line of sight? Looks like they should be able to. The crab is tanking. Salt Lord Scuttlers are down for the count. Let's uh, let's let's throw a freaking orange at that tree. You guys ready for this? Throw it. Oh, he threw it already. Okay, well, that didn't seem to do anything. We have Ballistics Calibration. Let's go ahead and pop that. Kale with the Ancient Salamander play in the corner. Creeping. Let's get the Death Guard back there just in case. Do we have extra powder? We do, so let's go ahead and give that to the Colossus. Man, extra powder is so good in this. Tide of Skilled's coming in. That tree man is just not wanting to go. Super tanky. Colossus, what better shots do you have? Uh, probably start shooting the Blessed Spearman, honestly. Yale, because Yale's been really patient. He's going to come in and karate chop us, I think. <laughs> Alright, so Crabbo, I think it's time for you to pull back. We're going to need you. Uh, Salamander chasing off that character over there. My two characters are uh, shooting. And that tree man should be going down soon. Oh, look at this. He's got a, a Saurus coming in. 
It is time to throw a piece of cackle fruit at him. You guys ready for this? Let's go. Throw that cackle fruit, baby. I threw a piece of fruit at Asaurus. Yes, victory is achieved. And this Saurus is, is really asking for it here, huh? Spirit Leech him. Coming with a crab slap. And you, what do we have to shoot? We can shoot you. Let's pull these characters back. Right now, we did some good damage, but I certainly don't want to be taking a beating from a, the mighty Scar veteran. We need to start working on Hyale's stuff, because Hyale's gonna... I need to be able to beat him to win this. Shoot you guys. The crab's still fighting here, which is great. We were able to break the big boy, and now we can pull forward the depth card a little bit. And yeah, that guy's going down quick. Um, I'm gonna save my Winds of Magic just all the way back up to 30. Extra powder to the Colossus. All right, crab, start kiting a little bit. Oh yeah, he's got all these like, like lizard things. Lizard things shooting at me here. The ancient Salamander is almost out of ammo, which is good because it's pretty crappy in melee. So let's get you back. And pull you back as well. Good. So we just broke this Scarvet. That's really nice. Oh, Magic Core Summon. That's really good. That's really clutch. All right, let's get the Morngulls to come peel it. We need, we need to get away from that thing. The militia are still shooting. The Sars here are getting pretty low. And great, we got rid of the Manticore, more or less. Oh, no! In the back, my mortars take it out. No! No! All right, so he's got some Razor Dawns. Let's go ahead and pull like back around the corner a little bit. Uh, Morngulls can roadblock for now. And the bombers can go and hit the Saurus back here. Yeah, I couldn't do anything about those Pterodons, really. The mortar's not like a super valuable piece anyways. All right, so let's go ahead and drop a Fate of Buna on these uh, Saurus here, because they're blessed and they're going to be really tough to kill otherwise. We'll drop some bombs on them as well. We should be able to finish them here. Get the Colossus shooting here. And you guys can shoot at the Razor Dawn hunting pack over there. Felcon's still flying around with Alariel. And what do we have here? Yeah, some, some rock drops, I would imagine, are going to come. Yeah, the Buna plus uh, the firepower here, quite good. But we're going to lose the Morngulls for it. Let's get some shots up in the sky here. Let's get our character shooting back there, because they can probably draw a better line of sight. The Bombers almost have those Blessed Saurus down. What abilities do we have off cooldown? Yeah, enhanced, uh, enhanced goodness here. I don't even know what those abilities like really do. Alariel's trolling the birds. Come on, get those points. Come on. Okay, he's he's diving me here actually. So the pal the depth guard should be able to wreck them pretty hard. Good, good, good. All right, the Morngulls took a beating, but for a cause. We can shoot the Frail Bastillodon now. Get these guys in combat against you, and you can start shooting here as well. Very good. So we have extra powder. Um, I don't know if giving it to my Lord is the is the right choice. Or the Colossus. I'm just going to wait and see how the situation unfolds. So the Militia is doing good. I mean, I'm not in last anymore. I might be able to pull this one out. I need to take down this, this beastie here. Sorry guys, I'm so focused on the game. We'll Spirit Leech the uh, Scarbet, because I'm pretty sure the Bastillodon's going to break here. Those Morngulls doing the work of the gods though, man. We still have our Depth Guard, we still have a Colossus, we still have our two characters that are all more or less healthy. Let's throw some fruit at this guy. Fruit! Cocktail fruit! Here it comes. Oh, looks like I just blasted my Death Guard in the back. Awesome abilities. Alright, so we broke this. Let's farm him for points. Falcon's got his uh, his Air Force here. We have one extra powder left. Let's go ahead and give it to the Lord. Those, those AP shots are pretty good. Hold on, guys. This is insane. All right, so in the back we have some Sara Spears coming, so let's move this way and like rotate away from the strength of uh, my opponents here. <laughs> Freaking Felcon just flying around with the Lario. Oh my god. Let's shoot, see if we can take this guy down. Lario's just getting blasted by the Colossus as it marches. It's pretty epic. Send you over there. All right, so yeah, that guy is shattered now. We have Razor Dawn hunting packs here. We need to get the Colossus shooting him. Those guys are a huge threat. Sally's, we can be screened out by the bombers, hopefully. Let's, let's get our characters going after the Razor Dons. And the Colossus should be able to get them as well. We'll keep the Depth Guard out of range of Razor Dons. That's, like, really important. And our, our win situation is pretty much non-existent here. Oh, yeah, we don't we don't want that. That's really bad. 
That ancient salamander got us pretty good there. But yeah, you can see our, our gunnery mobs doing a great job here. Yeah, broke them down. These characters, these single entity characters are really strong. Depth Guard can come help clean those Blessed Saurus up. All right, what's going on around the map? So we got a, we got a Lariel, we got a Spell Singer. Basically, I just need to get in range to... Uh... Oh, let's get the bombs going, put them in guard mode. Depth Guard can come back. What do we have here? Ancient Sally? Yeah, Sally's going in deep. Need to get the Depth Guard to screen out these spears. Those are freaking horned ones too, they're, they're no joke. Oh, Colossus! Live! Oh no, the salamander's coming for blood. Uh. Characters, fight! I'm not going to be able to peel it. Death Guard are doing a great job, though. Let's get the Colossus over here and see if we can 3v1 the salamander. I believe my characters are weak to fire, too. Yeah, should be. So Colossus needs to come over here and help. None of these... Yeah, gives reload accuracy, I guess, for the pistols. All right, Death Guard are in their element now. We finally gotten them into a good fight. Oh, Razor Dawn packs! Razor Dawn packs! We still have a little bit of ammo left here, so let's go ahead and drop some shots into the Razor Dons and continue chasing with the Colossus. Death Guard have cleaned up shop here. The Ever Queen is indeed the Ever Queen. Let's pull you guys back. Good, good. We broke all the monsters. We survived the Alpha Strike. Oh yeah. So what do we have left on the map? We have some. Thankfully, my Gunnery White still has some good ammo. Colossus is, uh, let's go ahead and take him off fire at will so he doesn't shoot at dumb targets. And you can start sniping to Henwin. We're out of ammo on this character, so basically just a combat character with the Cutlass now. Uh, shooting that Ancient Salamander off is probably pretty good. Now, Xyphos, <laughs> look at Xyphos! Look at Xyphos, guys, running around with one Eternal Guard! Oh, God. <laughs> just one. The brave Eternal Guard. All right, so we, we blasted off the Salamander now, which is good. So now we can rip some shots into the Horned Ones up here, hopefully. It's just about getting enough points to get within, because basically the last man standing gets a lot of free points. Freaking Falcon's still alive. Look at him. Oh, oh, an Ember Spear! The Ember Spear into the face! All right. Colossus is marching. Let's get you guys up here. I have no one's magic to speak of. Uh, looks like the salamanders. Oh my god, all these salamanders are freaking back. Jesus. Oh, this is close. We're creeping up on points because you get around. I can't remember what the exact amount is. So we need to shoot this bird lady if we can. Oh, we might get the long shot here. I have, I have a, I basically have a sniper rifle on that thing. Oh, you better watch out, lady. Oh, oh, she's going for the, the high dive. I might, I'm not going to be able to get her up there. Oh, do you see that? It destroyed the tower. What? I didn't even know that was possible. That was really cool. Oh, we won. We freaking did it. We freaking did it, boys. Oh, man. Look at this. Let's look at the score here. Oh, man, that was crazy. So we just, we edged it out with the last man standing, but you know, the MVP was the gunnery white, man. The extra powder was disgusting on the, uh, that was awesome, man. Thank you guys for talking me into that. That was certainly a lot of fun. It was certainly a lot of fun indeed. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even know that could happen. Like that buildings were in, like you could interact and destroy them, but that was really cool. GG indeed. Play the, play the game, I know. So we had a couple donations during that FFA uh, from BatCal. So sorry I missed them. I was just so focused on that FFA. Uh, okay, let me look. Wow. Okay, there was a bunch. So from Mutard. Hey, man, just wanted to thank you for the content. Currently enjoy your Vampire Coast series. And this feels like a community to give back to. Thank you, man. Glad you're enjoying the coast. Is it campaign or a multiplayer you're enjoying? And Jesse McCree, thank you for the fiber. We need more autogen. There certainly will be more autogen. And BatCal... With the 1244 great content as usual, love the autogens. For future autogen tourney with four players, you should end the stream with an autogen free for all with all the players. Yeah. I like to play in it too, though. That's the thing. I think Tank had already left too. Um, and then Galahan, thank you for the fiber. Glad to catch the grand finale post credits FFA. What a great way to get home. Yeah. Thank you guys.
Uh, I've never played Rome 2, Wilhelm, so I can't give you any recommendations for that. Schmachnego indeed. I am going to go feast. Jenkuya, Kitek. I hope you are doing Bardzo well over there. I am the Senate. And that is going to be it for today. So thank you guys all so much for joining. If you enjoyed the stream, please do drop a like on the way out. If you're not subscribed, hey, join the party, man. Come join this, come join this club. And for anybody who's interested in multiplayer, let me go ahead and get you the link. So I run, uh, there's two discords I run. I run one with Italian Spartacus, which is focused on pretty much more general gameplay campaign. And then I run one that is very, very heavily focused on multiplayer. Um, so I'll go ahead and get you guys an invite to that since this is a multiplayer stream. So if you guys want, just come hang out. We'll uh, be doing all sorts of events, things like that. So uh, if you want any updates, come join there. And that is going to be it for today's stream. So thank you all so much. And let's go through the donations. So Galahan, Batcow, Jesse McCree, Mutard, Ivan, Stephen Roberts, Astos Moldova, Nate McBrady, Adam V, Carolus Martellus, Mr. Pig, coming in hot, uh, P. Jad Tron, Matt Eagle, Ivar again, God of Gabos was from yesterday. So thank you guys all so much. Hopefully I didn't miss anyone, but regardless, I really appreciate you guys. And, uh, and yeah, you can't see the armies now. Well, yeah, you can see my... Okay, so for my army, here it is. Here's Zyphos' army. He got some missiles, and Mel Gibson was certainly powerful. Yali's army was decent, too. He had some good, like, range and harass. Um, but his army was very hard countered by what I had. He It would have been a really hard heads-up fight. And Falcon. Falcon had uh, something. He got a dragon, at least, and a Lariel. But it seems like he, he had a rough matchup versus what Zyphos had, I think. Yeah, it was a great game. So, on that same note, big congrats to uh, Zyphos for winning our Autogen tournament. So, if we go back to the brackets from earlier, you can see Zyphos, our grand champion. With a 3-1 victory in the end, he got some pretty pretty good stuff. And man, great games. It was uh, it was awesome. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining. We'll be back with more Autogen, more fun stuff soon. And uh, that is it for now. So thank you guys so much. And hope you guys all have an excellent night.